Okay, so we're getting our connection up and going. Welcome everyone to the Cardboard Herald's live stream of the gameplay of Nemo's War. We have a cool setup going on here. We have a couple cameras. I'm still developing my live stream tech, so if anyone is listening to this and has feedback on the audio or the connection or anything, just drop a message in the chat. For the most part, I'm just going to be playing the game. I'll kind of explain things as I go along, but this isn't intended to be a total tutorial. This is actually my second play of this game. Uh, first time playing was great. Uh, and just as an explanation on some of the live stream stuff we have, we have one camera here. We have one camera right up here that is capturing the overall table. And because I was like, man, how am I going to capture all this up close and personal stuff? I have another camera that if gods are good, I'm going to transition to. You're still going to hear audio. And this is a camera that much nicer is able to see the cards that I have going on here. Look how great that is. I'm going to be capturing some B-roll as I go along. Uh, this is meant to be so people can hang out and play games with me, but also learn more about Nemo's War itself and also for it to be uh, something where I can capture B-roll for our upcoming review. How cool is that whole setup? So I'm going to transition back to our main overview here for just a second. I think I got all of our setup done. We need this black dice off the board. Um, for review, I have our motive over here uh, as science because I tried Explore before and I failed miserably, but that was a learning game. I'm much more confident this time. Science has given us monstrous design as our card, which I'll transition back over here. This is our starting upgrade for the Nautilus, uh, which allows us to accrue uh, less no notoriety uh, as we do stealth attacks amongst the board, uh, fighting against all these evil imperialist ships. I'm sure there's some ships out here that aren't imperialists that are just kind of bystanders to Nemo's War, but I guess Nemo doesn't care all too much about that. Uh, also, because this is a review copy, I should point out uh, that um, there's a couple editions here at the table that are uh, my own editions. I have a couple game trays uh, inserts to hold some doodads that didn't come with the game, and I have my handmade uh, bag in case anyone wants to learn how to make these. I was thinking about making a tutorial uh, I made this myself years ago, uh, but it's just a drawstring bag that also opens up and can be relatively flat or be an opaque cup for games that require opacity in their cups. So we're going to transition back here and get started with our game, and I think we'll be good to go. So uh, our deck, the adventure begins what do we got here we got our act one card which is saying the facts relative to this apparition entered in various log okay i'm not going to go through all of the <laughs> uh flavor text in this that would be bananas if we did that maybe if i wanted to get my voice acting career all together this would be an excellent audition but in this case we got a prologue we're going to be rolling two dice until the next interval uh, in the game and then roll a die and place the nautilus in the corresponding major ocean which is Huzzah! Six. We are going to be hanging out at the Indian Ocean to start the game. And then commence play with the next do uh, card. Dard. I don't know what a dard is, but it's frightening. And then roll only two white dice to begin each placement phase. Perfect. So this is going to go off to the side. We'll put it right over there. And next adventure card. This is for our first turn here so jaws wide open this is a test i can commit the uh, nemo resource uh, in order to assist with it i need an eight or better uh, if i pass i can put this into my pass pile for potential points at the end of the game a lot of alliteration there potential points 
or I could fail to gain one Nemo resource uh, if I did a pass, but it goes into the fail pile, thereby not contributing resources at the end of the game. Or if I just fail it, I'm just going to lose one Nemo. Well, one Nemo resource, but I love the idea of losing one Nemo. So uh, on this guy here, we're definitely going to try to pass because I don't really want to lose one Nemo. So let's transition there. And we're going to commit two. We need an eight, rolling our two D6s, three, four, five, six. So I did not have enough. That it would be a loss to lose my Nemo there. And then I would also, potentially, I could re-roll something. Um, you know what? Let, let's, right off the bat, let's lose a crew member. We're going to do one re-roll. Council, you have expended yourself. You are no longer contributing to my ship. Come on. There we go. There we go. That's what I like to see. So 9, 10, 11. So I actually gain one Nemo resource. And this um, can go into my fail pile. So that way I have one more Nemo resource. I'm surviving as we go throughout the game. And now I do the rest of my turn. So that's the event phase. We're now going to do the placement phase. The placement phase has um, roll the dice on the current act card, six and one. That was actually incredible. Uh, we're going to then um, populate the board uh, with the placement of ship tokens. Uh, we're going to add one and one, and one and six. These are hidden ship tokens. Uh, and then the differential of six is going to give me my action point. So six and one, uh, the differential is five. I was already at one to start the game. So I go to my maximum up here. Cool. Now, what the heck do I want to do? Um, I think what I'm going most want to do right now, I could engage some of these ships, but... Uh, I think I want to pay attention to some of my Nautilus upgrades uh, because I want science, 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 science. Okay, so every science upgrade here is worth times six. So these Nautilus upgrades for steam torpedoes and hydro drive are going to be really important for me. And monstrous design gives me less, uh, uh, less notoriety as I attack ships. So I think I'm actually going to spend a resource here. I'm going to stock attack a uh, one of these hidden ships here, which means I'm going to reach into my bucket and pull out a ship to attack. Aha. All right. So uh, because it's a stock attack, I only get one attack. I can't repeatedly attack ships, but I have plus one to my dice roll. Uh, I'm going to commit my crew to this attack. So that's going to be one, two, three, four added to my dice roll. And I only need an eight. Let's do it. Oh, super myrtilated. The ship is going down. The city of Adelaide. Oh. Sorry, City of Adelaide. Uh, and I would normally get two notoriety, but we'll make that one notoriety because of monstrous design. Um, and we're going to add that to my salvage pool here for acquiring any of these upgrades. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing again. Let's do another stock attack. And let's see here, attack, bold or stock. Yeah, it's only one. So we're going to do that again. Now, uh, warship sunk and non-warship sunk are actually not worth a lot in terms of uh, the science motive. I can actually show that a little bit closer here. Uh, the motive dictates 
how much that you're going to end up getting based off of all the different uh, tags and the affiliated points. So things like a science tag up here, the yellow tag, is going to be worth a lot more, but sunk ships and everything for my science motive ain't gonna be worth a lot. So let's have this here. And what do we pull up? Oh man. All right, we got Royal Adelaide. Not the city of Adelaide, but Royal Adelaide, a freighter that we are doing our stock attack against. And once again, I'm going to commit my crew resource, risking it for the bisking it. And we'll put that over here. What are we going to do against you? So that's plus three, plus four, and boom, super killed it. Okay, so we got two of these here. Uh, so I've killed a couple ships, and let's transition. I have some gems that I could collect. This was a great first turn. Uh, one of the big risks of this game is that you can get so many um, action points by having a high differential, but if you rolled like a two and a three or a one and a two, you only got one action point in your turn, which is a bummer. Um, so let's see. We need to... Uh, we don't need to incite... Oh, I need to gain my one notoriety there from sinking that ship we want to collect this treasure which is a search action one point which search down here says that uh, we can commit any of our resources to it um, and then we get extra if we have the arcane library. We do not have an arcane library. Arcane library is right there. We should get an arcane library for us to do better searches. But for now, let's uh, do this search action. See what we can get. So three, seven, eight, nine, ten. And according to our chart, that is a success collect one treasure. So this token is going to go away and we get one from our treasure pile so let's see our treasure pile i'm going to look away and i'm going to pick boom this one here what is this okay so this is just one resource or one point for the uh treasure point tag uh, which has its own multiplier in this it's times zero because of our motive uh, but i can use this to add to our drm our dice roll modifier when it comes to upgrade actions collect a treasure that's going to go right up here and then let's transition back um I'm really kind of worried about some of our ship sites over here. Um, and I also want to potentially get these steam torpedoes, which is going to take four ships. So let's go over here because we have the linkage. And then I'm going to storm torpedo away. Oh, yeah. Brooke, it's so late, so late in playing Nemo's War. But you know what? I'm here for you. It's not so late here in Alaska. Time differential makes all the difference. It is only 9 o'clock at night. Perfect time for playing solo games. So I moved over. That was one action point, And we're going to fight again. And I'm risking the crew. And we're doing a stealth attack. And... Uh, that's going to be a new one of these ships, which is, what is it? What could it possibly be? Oh, it's a yellow guy. Okay. So let's take a look at this yellow guy over here. We have the ability to fight back on the Iliand, Iliand, Jilland, 
uh, whatever this armored frigate is, uh, actually has a fight on it, which is really just going to be a 2d6 that we are hoping we exceed in our d6. Otherwise, it's going to do some damage to us. And then we have to do 10 damage to it. This is going to be a chunky roll. Uh, we might end up using our Professor Aranax, who is one of our dudes here, uh, who we can expend as once game per game power to give us plus two DRM after a roll, uh, which is important. So let's see what we got. We have, first off, uh, on our combat sequence, we have Warship is going to attack. We roll 2d6, and then if the result is less than their attack value, then we suffer hits, which, as we recall, was 6. Let's see what we got. All right, I exceeded it. Perfect. All right, miss, no effect. And now we go to the Nautilus's attack, where I'm going to roll my d6s with my modifier. So 3, 4 for the stock attack. And, oh, dude, super got it. I shouldn't have worried about a thing. This guy is going over here to my collected ships. So that way I can spend it on this sick torpedoes. We need to get those. Yeah, torpedoes are going to help us out a ton. And so that is it for all of the actions that we can possibly do on this marvelous first turn knowing what you're doing in this game is so much better uh than just kind of going in blind and not really having a care in the world uh so we end our turn and we're going to start the next turn through our adventure cards uh the underwater forest here uh underwater forest has a uh, test on it, uh, which we can tr contribute the Nemo and the crew, the Nemo and the crew. If we pass, uh, then we put this in the pass pile and collect uh, plus two gems, uh, which are uh, treasures, uh, which is really nice. That would be amazing. Uh, this inherently doesn't have a lot going on up here as far as discoveries, but the ability to contribute multiple uh, types, I believe, if my sources are correct, we can contribute both of those. So this should be a really easy one to pass, giving us a three, four, five, and here's some dice roll for it. Oh, dude, 10. We would have had it anyway. So pass pile up here and collect two treasures which are these two all right Ooh, one of them has an ability some of these abilities here uh this is discard to gain one reroll or keep for four freaking points that's amazing and a three-pointer here these are going to be super helpful in our collected treasure pile who having this camera is so nice on here all right, let's transition back to the overhead. And let's see here. Your Discord server link has expired. This game looks beautiful, by the way. A nice alternate. Yes, yes. Trent, I love it. But you're right. I should have a, a appropriate Discord link in here. It's great to hear from you, Trent. Um, let's go ahead and get that taken care of while we're doing everything that we need. Um, uh, 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 uh. We need to go over here. Let's get an invite for Trent. We want this to never expire. And it's copied. See, this is the kind of quality that you come to the Cardboard Herald for. Um, let's edit this here. And you might have to refresh it. You might have to, or hopefully this doesn't collapse the whole internet by me editing the description as I go. Um, and Let's see. Luke, uh, how long was the setup for this? Uh, for the live stream or for the game itself? Uh, because for the live stream, it was probably about half an hour of setup to get all my cameras right. I'm introducing some new stuff that I haven't done yet. So that was definitely complicated. Uh, for uh, just the game itself, I don't know. 
maybe 10 minutes or so. It's really not that bad of a setup. The first time I played the game, setup was pretty significant because I was wrapping my brain around things, especially the semi-randomized adventure deck. But in this case, uh, yeah, having played it once before, it wasn't so bad. So we did our adventure. Now we're going to roll our dice. Boom, five and two. So that's going to affect where we're putting our hidden ship tokens. It's going to be a five and a two. And then I can scoot these up and that back and that back. Uh, and that's going to give us three action points. You can hold on to up to one action point per turn. Uh, we are only doing uh, <laughs> three action points because we held on to nothing. We expent it all because we were mad and furious and enigmatic and crazy because Captain Nemo is uh, a little bit of a eccentric kook, uh, so to speak. Uh, let's see here. What are we doing now? Oh, good. Richard is in here and it sounds like Richard's played. So Richard, I played this twice, uh, or this is my second time playing. So if I'm doing anything that is uh, crazy, keep me honest here. Now, we have a problem going on in this part of the sea because there is uh, an, an abundance of hidden ships, Schrodinger ships here, that if we don't start engaging with, are going to start flipping over and causing a lot of problems. And there's not a fast track over to here. I could take one, two, three movements, and that would be my entire turn, uh, which I don't like. Um, Otherwise, I can move around one, two, three, four, five. Also bad. Uh, so for now, what we're going to do uh, is I'm going to go one, two movements. Um, and then on here, we're going to, I think, fight another one of these guys so I can get these steam torpedoes out of the way. Uh, so let's... Um, Fight this guy. Fighting one of these with a stock attack. And then on our stock attack, we got to reveal what we're fighting. Oh, come on, Richard. I trust in you. I believe in you. You're here for me and I'm here for you. Oh, I should have kept the one that fell out of the side here. Uh, we have Lord Clyde, an ironclad. This guy has a seven on him. Do not like the seven. I'm going to switch to this different angle. And look at this here. Should be able to see that all right. Nice. That way you get up close and personal with the battle. Okay. And this, this footage is our B-roll for our review. How cool is that? So we have a seven, uh, and I'm going to roll for seeing if they damage me. Ugh, five. So now if you look over here, we have uh, a hit. If result is less than the uh, attack value, Nautilus suffers hits equal to the lower die value. So a two. I could re-roll this uh, if I wanted to, uh, expending one of my things, but I think I can actually... Um, I think I can afford this. For each hit, lose one random resource or destroy one card. Uh, so I don't want to destroy my monstrous design. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going, I'm going to be okay for now. We're going over here, and we're going to lose random stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six... And three, what is three? Oh man, I lost a crew, that's not good. And, oh, lost another crew, terrible. Sorry, that was Thompson and uh, Eleanor were the two people lost there. Sorry to say that, Thompson and Eleanor. Uh, good blokes, both of them. Now we can go ahead and get on to our actual combat with this ship to see if we're going to succeed. And let's see here. We're going to contribute at three uh, from our crew and then one from our stock attack. So we have plus four to our roll. We need a 10 or better. 
six, seven, eleven, dead. Lord Clyde, you did some damage. Thompson and Elena, Elvira, whatever their name is, uh, my dearest cousin, uh, they're they're gone. But so are you, and that is going to fill out all of our salvage ships. We could put these over here in the appropriate C, uh, which is going to give us more points the more we fill out in each of these rows for each of the Cs. But you know what? We are more focused on Nautilus upgrades early on in the game here. And if we were not doing stock attacks, we would be actually doing a, a lot more of this kind of stuff because you can pivot and attack many things at once, which is great, but also at the same time, you don't get as many bonuses uh, or only one thing can be um, uh, put over here into the salvage yard and it has to be the last thing that you're attacking and we wouldn't get to apply our monstrous design, which is making it so we gain a lot less notoriety up there. So benefits to doing what we're doing. Transitioning over and let's see. We have uh, those track markers you're meant to have open bit of the ring on the bottom. Those track markers you're meant to have the open bit of the ring at the bottom. The track markers. Oh, the open bit like down here? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, I kind of had them as, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I don't know why I had them there. They, they just kind of looked like backward C's to me. But that makes sense. I, I see what you're talking about. I'm picking up what you're putting down, Richard. There we go. Uh, we got it covered. <laughs> All right, back to the game. Uh, we're only a couple turns in. Uh, we need to pick up the pace here. And new adventure, because we've exhausted everything that we need to. So let's see what we got. We have... Prussia declares war. This is a play card. In every ocean where there are one or more Prussian ships, if any, immediately discard one hidden ship token or one revealed ship token of any type of nationality. So in every ocean where there are one or more Prussian ships, uh, which there are none, um, then always pass for this card's tonnage and victory points or fail for minus two notoriety. Um, you know, uh, I think I'm going to uh, pass this uh, for the victory points, mainly because I um, don't really care too much about notoriety right now. I think that's an okay decision. I don't think I'm going to regret that. So we're just going past that. We're going to tuck that over here. All right, that card was not too threatening. So let's go ahead and roll our dice. Ugh, this is what I was talking about. We got a one and a two. And that leads to a one and a two for our hidden ships. And uh, then, um, and then we go up to one point. Just one point, and that's it. Um, let's see here. Uh, he immediately regretted that. Yes. <laughs> so many things were regretted, Robert. So on this, uh, which, uh, by the way, shout out to Robert here for uh, the badass tripod that we have uh, who has contributed this. Uh, so uh, thanks to... Uh, Robert for popping in and checking on my progress. Okay, uh, we have one action point, uh, and I'm still really concerned about things going on here. Um, I'm actually going to contribute that one action point and just get straight over to five so I can start dealing with this stuff next turn. Might have been smarter to save that, but um, I, I think this is going to be the way that we're going to go this, this time. So new card, transition. Sounding like Fantano up here. Um, best teeth in the game. All right, what do we got? We got a keep card. So this is going to be my card that I'm going to hold on to. Uh, move the Nautilus directly between the Indian Ocean and the European Seas to pass. Uh, place the Arabian Tunnel marker on the map to remind you that this path is now open for the remainder of the game. 
at game's end fail if unused. So this is actually a really big thing in the um, 20,000 leagues under the sea. Like it's a big plot point that we want to have uh, the Arabian Tunnel between the Indian Ocean and the European Seas, which is this little number right here. Now, as this goes, uh, I can do this event um, uh, once, like I, I have to actually do it for this card to be passed and go up to here. Uh, so it's essentially like a conditional event that I can do uh, fulfilling before the end of the game. Uh, and I need to now open that up with this little token. Look at this. Nice. Got it all covered. And then, oh, we're getting electricity points. That, that's our science. That's our science. That's our, that's our sweet, sweet discovery here. The, the six times multiplier. This is like combo breakers here. All right, going to put this back. It's going to my keep pile, transition back. And let's roll some dice. Let's see what's going on. It's hard to keep track of what. Damn it, only one point again? Are you kidding me? Ugh. Okay, one point and three and two. Get some hidden shipsies. Three and two. Now two is a significant problem. Where's that? The Eastern Pacific. They're just three and two to me, not Eastern Pacific and North Atlantic. What do you expect me to know my geography? Come on, people. That's terrible. All right, here. Let's see. With my one action point, um, now I could try and do an attack where we are going to sink a bunch of ships. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, though, is hopefully do a refit. Oh, it takes two points to do a refit to get my storm torpedoes. Uh, and I don't want to sink anything because I'm already at my maximum salvage for my uh, ships here. Uh, so I think I'm actually going to stick in the European seas for one more turn, see if I can build up some action points, get these torpedoes, which the torpedoes are going to potentially allow me to just flat out sink ships with free actions, which would be really nice. I would love that. If we can make that happen, that would be perfect. Okay, so new turn. Um, then what do we got? Gotta press my buttons. Uh, a frigate's demise. Add the black background frigate to the Nautilus's current ocean and fight it immediately. This is a mandatory free stock attack action. Now, I am sure there is some sort of rule for what happens if you don't have the space in your current ocean to place a frigate. Uh, because it's a free mandatory stock action, uh, this is my second game. I should do this uh, for... I should check the rules here. This is also what you come for, right? Is to have in-depth rule explanation. If someone knows it in uh, chat, I would love to hear it. What happens if you go to place a ship because of a specific action, but you don't have the ability to place it. Um, but I'm not going to look it up on BGG. And so instead, if I can't find it quick, I'm just going to make a decision. And that's going to be in the video. Um, that's just going to be how it operates. I know what happens if you go to place a ship and it's uh, and you can't place it in your current ocean as far as like hidden ship placement, but that doesn't work for the card. I think the card, given the golden rule, would override what you would normally do. So my anticipation would be that you would probably just replace one of those hidden ship tokens. That seems reasonable. Um, doesn't say anything about it in here. So, we're going to just make a decision. Yep. Yep. We're just going to replace one of these hidden ship tokens. And that is how we're going to live. All right. The Glasgow. Here, this frigate. 
is freaking attacking me. This frigate is frigating attacking me. I think I just said attacking, which you can tell how comfortable I am on live mic. All right, so we added it there. It's a free stock attack action. Uh, so I haven't even done my placement for the turn. Uh, they have a six attack and I rolled a seven, which is nice. So I'm not going to end up taking any damage from them this time. Uh, this should be right up there. Uh, and then we're going to do our attack against them, contributing some crew. Plus three from my crew, stock action, plus one to my DRM. So this is a four. Oh, dude, I decimated the Glasgow. And you know what? I don't have any room to put the Glasgow up here. So Glasgow is going in the European seas right up here. Boom. And as far as our card, um, oh, it's just an F. It just says F, fail, put it away. Goes away right down here. <laughs> okay, that is how we're going to live our life, but that sets up our turn. Let's, let's get some action points, everyone. Let's get some, there we go. A five and a two. A five and a two is going to populate some stuff on the board. Uh, okay. Our five is where we're at. And then a two. Now, we do not have room to populate anymore here. So we're going to populate in an adjacent area. If we couldn't populate in an adjacent area to the two, the Eastern Pacific, then we have real bad problems and we're going to start revealing ships uh, prematurely, which revealed ships actually interfere with the other actions that we're going to take. All right, so this adjusts back here. And we go at one, two, three because of our five and two. First things first, we're going to do a refit action. It is two action points. One, two. Um, I really should look at these other cards that I have available to me before I just assume that the best one is this steam torpedo. Uh, ooh, yeah, that glare is something else here. Um, Okay, so this steam torpedo is what I have been desiring, which uh, allows me to shoot these guys. But I also have a fog machine, and these were randomized at the beginning of the game. You start with one based off of your motive, but in this case, uh, these are the four that I drew that I can purchase. Um, for one action, you may remove this card to decrease your notoriety. Not so big of a deal. Love the fog machine. It's very foreigner. Uh, it's a very 70s arena rock. Um, maybe some prog rock in there. Uh, hydro drive, uh, moving two consecutive oceans. I didn't think that that was that important in Explore. In this game, I am dreading how many action points I am spending on movement. So this would be very worthwhile as well. Uh, this arcane library helps contribute to my treasure actions, which would be really nice. Um, but nonetheless, we need to go over to here. I can't even stretch my cord <laughs> over to here. Uh, but we're going to do a refit action, which is saying that in order to pass, we need a 7 to 8. And if we do that... Uh, uh, for our refit, we gain an upgrade and lose one treasure. Or if we get a 9 to 11, we gain an upgrade. Or 12 or higher, we gain an upgrade and one fewer salvage. And we can exert any one ship resource on this. And we can also spend treasure in order to um, uh, add DRM, the dice roll modifier, uh, up to its value. So plus X for any one spent treasure, which is why we want to collect treasure. Treasure is helpful for end of the game points, but it's even more helpful for getting awesome stuff. So let's see here. We're going to spend, I don't know, let's do, do a three and let's do uh, contribute some more crew to this. Risk losing them. There's no way that I'll lose on plus six. Come on. Impossible. Six and seven is 13, which means that I can spend these 
in order to get my ship at one cheaper. And we're going to spend these guys here Bloop. in order to get the ship upgrades, my steam torpedoes. And so we can now roll 2d6 and uh, sink a targeted non-warship or 5 plus on a targeted warship, which means it has to be revealed. I don't think I can populate the, the hidden tokens uh, with revealed ships utilizing this as the free action. I can only do that as part of attacks, but if they are populated, then I can start killing them with this. And it works towards my scientific upgrade, my scientific motive here, which I really want to work towards. All right, cool. So transition, see how chat's going, pop into there. Oh, we got some sports emojis. I, I love it. That's what it's all about, I guess. Okay, uh, the five and two, I populated the board. We already did all that. Um, and I got my steam torpedoes. And I think we're going to start kicking some butt and taking some names. All right, so we're going to do a bold attack. That is one. We're going to target this guy here. We're going to get rid of that token. And he's going to become... Oh, man, I don't like the yellow ones. So my monstrous design is no longer applicable to these guys. That means that I'm losing notoriety left and right. Um, and what was that frigate's notoriety gain? Uh, none. So I'm good. Okay. So on this guy, he's got a seven. And I need to roll higher than a seven. This is spent. That is definitely not higher than a seven. Three is all right. Let's see. I would need to roll a four, five, or six. That's a 50 50 chance. Um, you know what? I don't want to take any more hits. So I think I'm going to use. Professor Aranax for plus two DRM after a roll, which is sad. No, he's science. He's science. I need him. Um, so we're going to spend a reroll here. We got this. I believe in me. Yeah, all right, no damage. I didn't want to take two more damage, uh, random damage, especially because if our crew starts depleting, then our dice roll modifiers that we can gain from that are going to get fewer and fewer, uh, which is real bad. I want that plus three as long as I can have it. All right, so I passed their attack, and now I'm going to contribute three um, to this attack. This bold attack, which was maybe bad plans. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else. Okay, so three. We need a seven or better on the dice roll. That is not going to do it. It's terrible. Very terrible. Um, and I do not have a re-roll over here. So we're just going to have to accept that. Um, that's a bummer. <laughs> All right. Uh, I lose uh, the wrist resource. And then uh, if I miss, plus one notoriety, which I did. And then um, lose one or two wrist resources. Um, I only lose the one because I did not uh, roll a critical failure. And now I could take another action. I'm going to use my steam torpedoes. That is a warship is an ironclad warship. Um, and so if I get a six or better, I probably should have saved my reroll token. All right, once per action phase, I may make one free attack and then target a non-warship five or plus. Um, if, however, if I roll, if I miss this, then it's going to be only one D6 for the rest of the game that I can roll. I guess my torpedoes get worse. Like the torpedoes get depression and sad because 
one of their brethren didn't affect the existing warship out there. I don't know what the thematic reasoning is, but it succeeded. So uh, this here is uh, sunk, and it says, um, does it uh, sink the target of warship? So I think that is just going to go here to a sink. I don't think I can claim it for salvage. So we're in the European seas still. I'm going to double check that on destroying ships. <laughs> Be really embarrassing if I had this on the side camera the whole time and you guys couldn't see a single thing that I was doing, even though I guess I'm looking at a rule book right now. I don't know if that happens in other live plays. Surely that has to happen at some point. Um, that is sinking a ship, removing uprising, lull, torpedo attack, insight, search, combat. That's what I wanted. Okay, so sunken ships as tonnage. If you sink it for tonnage, uh, you can remove it from play and garner its victory points. That's what I did down here. Sunken ships as salvage. If you pillage a sunken ship token for salvage, you forego its victory points. So it's still a sunk ship. So I'm going to err on the side of saying, you know what? This sucker is going up here. Uh, and um, I also lose one for its uh, token. And that way I can use it to maybe work towards my arcane library or my hydro drive. Um, and before I leave here, uh, I'm going to use my one action point to try to uh, salvage, uh, to, to search, search. It's not salvage, we're going to search. Uh, what do I need? I need a seven to eight or a nine to 11. Nine to 11 is success and I collect a treasure. Um, treasure tokens are going to help me get this. So seems reasonable that I would want to do that. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Uh, that's my one last action. Ooh, let's risk some Nemo. What's neat about Nemo is as Nemo gets more and more under pressure, then Nemo actually contributes more to my dice rolls. Uh, he's exhilarated by the challenge. Uh, so 9, 10, 11, 11 on a search, select. That's a success, not a select. Um, and I get the treasure. My treasure is uh, I can discard to gain a Nemo or keep for four points. Hey, look at that. That was a good treasure to get. That's going to be it for this turn. Okay, new turn. We're going transition here. So we can take a look. This is a test. It has to be the whole of the ship. So we're testing the metal of the Nautilus itself. Um, we need nine. Reveal one additional Nautilus upgrade card, which is now available for purchase. I want this. This is a thing I want. I want this in my life. I want to win this. Uh, so we have plus two. Uh, I don't have anything else to really contribute to this. So we're just going to say that's a plus two. Y'all. And I got it. Ten. Look at that. It's amazing. Things worked out well for me. I love it. Okay, uh, so here are Nautilus upgrades that I didn't uh, get to put into play at the beginning of the game. We're going to reveal reinforced armor. Now that sounds sexy. All right, attacking warships receive plus one DRM for all attack dice rolls. That is very good. It costs four, but it is very good. It's very sexy. I very much want that. All right, so this past goes into our past pile, which it's worth zero points, but remember, we have a modifier here. And in theory, yeah, look at that. Adventure cards plus one each. So this is worth one point under this, this motive. Life is good. 20,000 leagues under the sea here. We're living our best Nemo life. Okay. Moving on, what do we got? We got our placement turn. All right, five and a four. That's only going to be one action point for me. Five, where I'm at, and a four down here. 
the one action point, what do I want to do? Uh, I want to continue to take care of these ships because I want to continue working towards these. So let's um, let's go ahead and do this here. We're going to do a stock attack, which is going to be uh, one of those. And just one of those. That's all we need to do. And what am I thinking about? Oh, no, uh, we're risking a Nemo. That's what we're doing. Is that where I was? I was on determine? I think so. Okay, so plus two to our... No, I think it was up here on strong. Oh, man. Someone knows the playback. All right. There we go. That's what I thought. Yeah, you guys, you guys, there's a bit of a delay. Uh, so I just saw that hop up in chat. Richard, thank you. I thought it was that strong. Okay, so plus two. Uh, and uh, then European Seas going to attack this guy here. And I'm contributing plus two, three. I need to figure out what ship I'm attacking. That's what happens when you're trying to do all kinds of stuff at once. Oh, this is a little teensy guy. He's not even attacking me. How cool is that? Three, four, five, six, seven, plus one from the stock attack. You know what, Jumna? You never stand a chance. Jumna was never going to do anything to me. I had this in the bag all along. I was 100% confident. Action point is spent. We're going to go on to our next turn. because so there's nothing else that we can do at this time. And, ooh, Jumna. Jumna, check this out. We're going to transition here, Jumna. Plus one crew. Unbelievable. This is going up here. Boom. We can now start contributing additional resources. We are up on plus one crew. I love it. Okay. New adventure card. Act two. First intermission. All right. Maybe we should have um, picked up the pace earlier. Okay. So add the dark yellow reinforcement ship group to the ship draw pool and continue to play. So this is our ship draw pool. This custom made bag that I was talking about earlier. Look at that. I have one of these that's Lord of the Rings themed that I made, and it's awesome, and I use it for War of the Ring and Battle of Five Armies. Okay, so now the dark yellow, this kind of mustardy color, all of those are in our potential ships mixed in in our opaque container. And then roll two white dice and one black dice to begin each placement phase. So now I am going to be placing potentially three uh, bad things per turn, and that's just how my life rolls. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. Um, and we're going to continue with the next card, I believe, um, and continue play with the next card. Yep. Oh yeah, Captain Nemo's Thunderbolt. It's a test with N and H. So that's my Nemo and my Hull, which gives me plus four. I don't have to contribute those, and I would lose a lot of stuff if I failed them. But this pass, plus one on our notoriety and collect a treasure, gladly. Okay. Nailed it. Never even was concerned. Okay, pass. And then up here, let's go ahead and get our one notoriety which if we get close enough to contribute these ships to our uh, pool, our Schrodinger's pool, our potential ships that things could turn into, then that would get dangerous. But our one treasure, I promise I'm looking away. It's this one, this one. Um, oh, well that's bad news. I just get rid of it and get to notoriety. I wonder what that could be. It was, uh, Treasure of Sierra Madre. It was real bad and notorious. People didn't want their stinking badges. That's going up there. Okay. So now we're going to populate for the turn. All right. 
There we go. Roll in three. Four and a two and a four. Okay, if the two white dice were the same number, we'd have a lull turn. We do not have a lull turn. We're going to get two actions, and now let's start having bad things happen. Uh, so for the two, we can have two potential placements, and for the four, we can have this here. Actually, yeah, two potential placements. Uh, this two and this four are starting to be real bad business. Um, I think I might purchase this hydro drive to be able to start moving around the board faster. Uh, it's also part of my science discovery, so I think I want to do that no matter what. Um, so I'm going to get to my um, refit action, and then we're looking for... A 9 to 11 would be ideal so we don't lose a treasure. I'm going to contribute my crew to this. All right, crew. All hands on deck. We're going to be working on refitting the Nautilus. We need this. Everyone knows we need a hydro drive. It's what we've always wanted. Okay. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That allows us to purchase it. Not for one cheaper but I didn't want to discard my precious treasure up there. Hydro drive. Okay, so we now have a hydro drive. We can move pretty far in a turn, and that was all of our actions. See, now the game's starting to cook along. Okay. And we have Vanicoro. This is another keep card, and when the Nautilus is in the Pacific Ocean, I can take a specific action. Specific in the Pacific. You got that? Okay. So that action would be to pass and collect two treasure, or fail, and gain up to two ship resources. So I can choose one of these, uh, and it's not actually a test that I'm going to take. It's just I'm going to be visiting over here in Vanicoro, uh... Uh, what does he say? The effect was magical. I rose suddenly. The Nautilus has brought us to Vanicoro? I asked. Yes, Professor. Okay. Um, God, that Eno you know, tool artwork is amazing, isn't that? Like, some of this I just want framed in my house, in my studio, in my office. I want it everywhere. Anyway, enough fondling artwork. We're going to put this in our keep pile. And then if we happen to go over to the Pacific Ocean, uh, which we're in the European, so Pacific, um, here's Central Pacific, South Pacific, Eastern Pacific, Pacific Coast. So I think if we're in any of the Pacific Oceans there, yep, any Pacific Ocean, we're in good shape. What are we doing for the board? Oh, it's a lull turn. And we're going to do the lull turn action. So, uh, placement phase. If there's a lull turn, we place ship tokens only for white dice. Not for anything else. Good news for me. Uh, so, we're going to put one there and one over here since it's connected. And things are getting dangerous otherwise. And then what are we doing up here? We need, uh, on the little turn, place a treasure available token on the doubles ocean and on the adventure deck. So on the doubles ocean, one, I know they accumulate on the adventure deck. Um, I think they can only be one per uh, actual ocean spot is how I read it in the rules. Uh, if uh, someone wants to reinforce me on that, they're welcome to. Um, but if we take the adventure action to uh, potentially get these, um, it talks about how uh, you can collect uh, treasures up to the number that are on the adventures. So eventually you really do want to take adventures up here. Um, and then we get no action points. We check uprising cubes, which their primary purpose is interacting with the various motives that we have and reducing our uh, notoriety because essentially we're saying that like we've 
uh, instigated these uprisings in these imperialist countries, which has taken the heat off of uh, the, the, the Nautilus and Captain Nemo, uh, which I love. So my notoriety goes down because these governments are so busy fighting off these cubes or something. But otherwise, they don't really do all that much for me other than trigger into anything that asks how many uprising cubes I have. So we don't need to do any of that. Uh, our action phase, if I had action points or if I want to spend any of my officers, we'd be able to do those. Um, and it's actually cheaper during lull phases to do certain actions uh, like repairing or refitting or any of that kind of stuff. But in this case, we're just going to roll on to the next turn. And I think that's how we're going to live our life. Okay, drawing our next card, the Korea Incident. Uh, this is another keep card, and when we're in the Western Pacific, specifically, you may intervene on Korea's behalf. Uh, we have a pretty huge test there, but it's a test that um, we can use multiple uh, committed resources for, and then we could place uprising cubes in any Pacific Ocean locations, which would be pretty good, I guess. Um, not that big of a deal. Uh, passing it um, isn't that big of a deal for points. Fail if unused, which isn't a big deal because there's no points to lose on there. Uh, but if we fail the test, you lose two whole and gain four notoriety. And I'll have to double check if placing the cubes from this gives you uh, the reduction in notoriety the same way that uh, doing an action to uh, incite would, which I imagine it would because why wouldn't you lose notoriety? That's the main purpose of those cubes. But I thought I read something about placing them through other means does not give you the notoriety reduction. Uh, so I can double check that, but I don't think that that's too integral of a card to worry about for now. So our turn is a three and a four. So we get one action point and we're populating on our three and our four. Let's transition this over here. Okay, so I put one up here on three. I put one up here on four and... Then I put uh, one on one. Okay. One has one last spot where we can go. I need to start attacking ships like crazy. Uh, I wish I had additional damage or something that I could do. Um, building up to this uh, reinforced armor would be really nice. Um, I can't move and attack moving would be nice so i can start reducing some of the levels of things in here um getting up to one would be great and since i have my hydro drive um i'm not going to be able to do anything this turn so just in case i'm not going to spend my action in case we have a lull turn come up which may bite me in the butt if i roll like a six and a and a one um, because then I'd lose out on an action. But that's how we're going to play it. That's how we're doing our life. All right, what do we got for a new turn? All by electricity. Whew. Ah, science. I want it. I need this. It's a keep. Pass at any time during your action phase to immediately receive an additional 1d3 of actions this turn. Holy smokes, this is an incredible card to have come up as an event. This was a reprieve. It was a you catastrophe. If you're familiar with your Tolkien, that is exactly what is going on here. Okay, so let's see what our dice say we do. Six and a four and a four. And that means that we have bad stuff. Six and then four can go here and another four. Four can populate up there. Whew. Whew. Uh, and six and four. Gives us two. Okay. All right. I have managed to dodge some of these bullets so far, but I need to start crushing some ships. Um, I think North Atlantic is all right because it can populate to over here. Um, 
I think Eastern Pacific is actually our worst because it has nowhere that it can populate to. A one can populate over to six. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to spend one action. We're going to go one, two, and since I took the 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 Arabian Tunnel, or Arabian Tunnel card says that uh, if we move between the Indian Ocean and the European Seas to pass, boom, goes into the pass pile. It is a scientific discovery. We got this. Captain Nemo has it. Um, we need to start killing some stuff. Um, and I don't think I have anything that's going to really be a benefit to me in killing other than just killing. So... Uh, I'm not going to take a, a wild, wild attack right now. Um, we're going to start by spending an action, and we're going to do a stock attack against something hopefully not terrible. Come on, please. Oh, nice. The Fulmar. Fulmar, you are easy. I like it. Okay. Uh, Fulmar is over here. And all we need is a nine. We're going to commit our three. And then we're going to commit plus one from it being a stock attack. So we have plus four. We need five or better. Super got it. Once again, we're going over to here. And um, that does not increase anything. Uh, I'm just going to keep on running down the line doing stock attacks. Um, we're going to attack the next guy here. Um, what are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, this is a bad one. Okay, so he has a six. It's what we need to roll over. Super rolled over it. Hope I do that well again. And I'm committing three four again so we need six or better on our overall dice roll horrible horrible um and i don't have a re-roll at this time uh that would only be one damage one notoriety but it's also a wasted action so i'm actually going to give myself um personnel personnel augment points at all characters that's seven points that's five points but he is five points in science so we're going to have our first officer bite bullet i lose one nemo my first officer is gone um but i got additional drm for doing that which means i've succeeded in destroying this fiendish thing uh and then if we take a look again at our keep cards we have some cool ones um the um there we go anytime during your action phase uh you can pass this to immediately receive an additional 1d3 of actions this turn so we're dividing this in half essentially a one two uh is one uh three four is two and five six is three um, so we're going to pass it. Uh, that just slid that over there. So that's two extra actions goes into our pass pile. And then we're going to have a field day with our actions. Um, I'm going to move one, two, and start stock killing these suckers. So what I was born to do. All right, another ship. Come on, something good. This one. Ugh. Oh no. Oh no. It's an orange one. Do not like. Significantly bad. I regret everything. Um, and that was my one action point there. Five. That would be two damage, two random damage to the Nautilus. I don't have anything that's going to take me above eight 
on like additional DRM or, or anything. So we're just going to bite it. So they shot me and uh, we're going to lose random ship resources. So a one is Nemo, two, three is crew, three, four, five, six is hole. Uh, that's hole. Bloop. We got one in the hole. We got another one here. Uh, fight and trim. We're still, we're still doing good. We got this. Um, however, we need to finish our combat. All right, I'm going to risk my three crew again. Uh, plus one for the stock attack. So I have four. And then, so I need, ugh. I need a seven or better. That is not going to do it. <laughs> okay. Um, four, yeah. I don't have anything that I think would help me out, even if I spent everything that I had. So in this case, we are going to uh, do our loss. We're going to get one notoriety and then we're going to lose our risk resource, our crew. Uh, that was um, Jebediah. Jebediah ended up getting axed. He fell out of the side of the Nautilus, which I don't know how you fall out of the side of a uh, underwater dirigible, uh, but he did. Sorry, Jebediah, that was your fate. Okay, now on the board, uh, I'm going to use my steam torpedoes. As you recall, they're right here, and they're going to let me do my potential for just sinking this ship, six, seven, eight, which we got. So, Borda is going to go into this pile here, but I get two notoriety, which our notoriety is climbing up closer to adding these nasty blue ships. Do not want. Okay, and I think that's going to be it for our turn. The steam torpedoes were a free action, so we're in good shape there. All right. Man, I think this live stream is actually working out here. Uh, things are, are moving smoothly. I'm uh, always uh, happy when things aren't in terrible uh, shape as far as connectivity and whatnot. All right, shortage of air. Shortage of air. This is just a test, a test. What can we contribute to this test? Um, pass. Ooh, we definitely want to pass this here. We got more of our science uh, uh, point tag up here. Uh, failure is losing one crew or decide now to skip this turn's action phase and receive zero action points. Well, we got to do it no matter what. So I guess we'll contribute some crew to this and see how it pans out. So that's two. Uh, shortage of air. Um, so we need an eight or better. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. I know you were all praying for me on your end, so fortunately we managed to do it. Um, this goes up into our pass pile and our crew resource goes back. We didn't lose it. And now we are on to our placement phase. All right. Three and a five, that's going to give us two actions. And then we're at three, can put one there. And then, well, we work from the bottom up. So one and then three placed one there. Five can now place one across here, which is fortunate. Glad that came up. Okay, uh, two action points. Um, I could be collecting more treasures. Uh, I do want this arcane library, uh, but more importantly, I want this reinforced armor. To get that reinforced armor, I'm going to have to start murdering some more fools. I'm going to try to free up some space in the North Atlantic. Um, or I could just stay here and... Yeah, yeah, we're just going to... 
Oh, it's so hard. It's hard. It's so hard to say. Um, I'm just going to kill something here. That's what I'm going to try to do. <laughs> I'm awfully presumptuous about what I'm going to do. So stock attack. Let's see what we can fight. Uh, another white ship, the Alfred, is just a passenger vessel here. And Alfred, what are we going to do with you, Alfred? We need a nine. I think I can afford a nine. Uh, risking my crew. I really should get more crew. That would be important. Uh, so that way I can contribute more to these. So uh, two, three, I need six or better. Certainly got it. That goes up here. I don't lose any notoriety because it was a stock attack and I got that monstrous design. I got it covered. Ain't no one thinking that this is an actual ship. They're like, yo, that's a Kraken in the water. I ain't no ship. I know what a ship looks like and it doesn't look like that. Um, because ships didn't look like this until Jules Verne described them and then Governments were like, oh, that sounds like a great way of killing people. And so they started building these. I don't know anything about the history of uh, <laughs> the history of uh, nautical design. Maybe um, like bathyspheres were a thing. So maybe they were working on that earlier. All right, my second action. I'm going to actually save that action um, because I don't want to miss out on getting some of that, and I don't have any more room. So next turn. Oh, this one's awesome. This is another scientific discovery. This is a test. We can do Nemo and Hole. And then if we pass, this uh, adventure car places this into the Nautilus upgrades. So it could be an upgrade that we could acquire. This is awesome. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do on the, the long range beams here? We're going to get our Nemo, because he's got to think of it, and the hole has got to sustain it. So that is plus three to our test. So we need a seven or better. Oh, dude, magnetic mines, you are always destined to be mine. Will you be mine, mine? Yeah. That'd be perfect on Valentine's Day. Um, so much wit. Okay. Now we're doing our placement. Uh, six and a three. Three actions. I'll take it. And I preserved one, so we're at four. And then five, three, and six are going to get these ships. Come. Okay. So five. All right. Here's where we're in bad shape. Uh, we'll start at the bottom. So three is right up here, the North Atlantic. Can't place anything adjacent. So if we're doing a placement, um, we can flip a ship. I think it's in that place or any adjacent sea. Let's uh, double check here. Um, hidden ship, ocean, major board. If there are no empty ocean spaces in the major, then you must do the first possible item on the list. Spread out. We cannot spread out. And then we would reveal if there are no empty ocean spaces to place the hidden ship token in an adjacent ocean, replace one hidden ship token in that or an adjacent ocean of your choice with a revealed ship at random from the draw pool. Um, after drawing and examining the ship, then you must then decide exactly where to place it. So that's kind of cool. I get a little bit of ability to scout out what I'm going to have to contend with. I'm running out of ships here. Okay. Oh, another white one. Um, so I could put this actually closer to me. I kind of like the idea of having it here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Uh, so that was our three. And then we're going to have to do that a couple times. Uh, five has nowhere where you could possibly place. So let's reveal one. Another one. Um, five, you could go up here or here. I don't know that it makes much difference, but this is usually a pretty out of the way area. 
But now it's much more connected with the Arabian Tunnel. So I don't know. Oh, this one's plus one crew. I want to make this close to me no matter where I am. If I go here, because of my, my hydro drive, I guess anywhere is relatively close to me. So we'll put that there for now. And then my six. What do we got? Ha! More of these. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to double up in this area. Oh, no. No. Because uh, this one could populate over here to the other side of the world. Caught myself. I checked myself before I riggedy wrecked myself because Richard, Richard has my back, but I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of Richard. Okay. <laughs> Wherever you are in the world, Richard, I'm glad that you're watching. Okay. So our turn, we got our four action points and we got to figure out what the freaking frack we are doing with that. Um, I do like this plus one crew that comes out of this one up here. Uh, but I need to make a pit stop in the South Atlantic. Uh, and I do need to build up my stuff. These magnetic mines, I didn't pay too much attention to what they're actually doing for me. So let's transition over here. So if you're non-torpedo attack versus metal hull warships, um, the Nautilus attacks first. So I don't have too many warships right now, so it's not actually going to help me like straight up kill some fools. Um, but it's not going to not help me kill some fools. Um, reinforced armor is definitely better, but this one has the science tag. Um, I think I'm going to get the reinforced armor for now and still try to get those magnetic mines. Well, I guess the magnetic mines may be really helpful because then I don't even I, I can hopefully kill it and it contributes to my science. So let's go ahead and get that. I'm going to spend two, risk some crew, and then we're trying to do a refit action, which we want a nine or better to not just inherently lose a treasure. Uh, I'm going to lose one treasure to make it um, uh, plus one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm at plus three. So I need a six. I didn't even need it. Uh, 11 uh, over 12. So I can actually uh, refit for one less. So let's go ahead and get these... Well, at this point, I'm going to get that reinforced armor uh, because then I'm much closer to getting those magnetic mines. Yeah, I think that's going to be the smartest idea. So let's go ahead and cut these guys up here. Let's get this reinforced armor. I don't know. There's probably reasons why I'd want to do one or the other. It's getting late at night. Okay. Um, and I'm going to move over here. I'm going to take my free action, my torpedoes. This is a non-warship, so I need to roll a 5 or better on 2d6, which I can do. I, I believe in me. 5 or better. 6. Boom. And this is going to go up here. One notoriety, uh, which... We are getting closer to these blues, so I might have to start dropping some cubes on the board in order to avoid them. Um, and I'm not going to be able to kill these guys yet, but I can get myself in a position where I can start working towards that. That plus one crew is really important to me because then I'll start be able to have additional bonuses again to my stuff. And restoring my crew takes additional um, actions uh, that I don't want to have to contribute, though it is easier on a lull turn. So I'm actually going to save this one for now and see where we get on our next turn uh, because I wouldn't be able to kill them at this point. So what do we got? The Indian Ocean. All right, another keep. 
When I'm on the Indian Ocean, I may pass to gain one Nemo and one Notoriety. Because I'm just chilling there. At the end of the game, fail if unused. Okay. Well, I'm on the North Atlantic right now. That doesn't do all that much for me. And rolling our stuff. Lull turn. Six, three, and three. Three can place one here. And three can place, uh, I guess, another one. Um, is going to be a flipsy dude. Which is this right here. The Clipper. Ariel. I feel like singing. I can make that in my own ocean right now. Give me a target for my torpedoes, which would be nice. Um, yeah. I like that. Or even better. Let's put that up here for now. Yeah. Yeah. That's connected. That's the way we're going to do it. Gives me a lot of targets in one area. Though, if I do it down here, I can kill it and then move and kill it, freeing up more space. We're going to try for that. So I do have a little turn, which is nice. We don't have to do that. Uh, we're going to populate another one on here. And then we're also going to populate another treasure, which already has one. So um, then on a lull turn, we could take any actions that we want, which may be cheaper. So uh, we can regain crew, which costs only one on a lull turn. This was going to allow us to regain crew, but I'd rather be in surplus, abundant crew. Um, so the uh, rest action. I can exert Nemo or Hull. Ah. Sticky hands. Plus two. And I get plus X for any one spent treasure. Uh, I can get two crew if I get a 12 or better. I'm actually going to spend this treasure that allows me to get plus four to my dice roll. So I have plus six to this dice roll. I want to guarantee this. And I don't want to gain the notoriety of getting the partial success. So nine, uh, 10, 11. So that's uh, greater than 12 plus two crew. Look at that. So we're at nearly full crew, which puts us in a much better position. Oh, treasure, right. If treasure uh, uh, from the little turn, if uh, treasure can't be placed in their home, they should be placed in an adjacent one. I missed that earlier. When I rolled two ones, the treasure should have been placed elsewhere. Um, so I guess I'm not going to place it now because enough of the board ha state has changed, but I will place the surplus one uh, over here. So forgive me on that rule flub, uh, but I recall it now. And uh, that is our turn. Um, and so we did our one action and we're on to another adventure card. What do we got? Capital encounter. All right, this one is immediately fail. It's just play, fail, plus two notoriety. All right, we're at one fewer than we need in order to get all these blue tokens back here. Uh, and add the black background capital ship to the Nautilus's current ocean. Okay, that's this guy here and fight it immediately. This is a mandatory free stock action. Oh, how nice of them to contribute that to us. Okay. Uh, so playing by the rules that we played by earlier where I just replaced a hidden ship with that um, rather than have it as like an extra guy hanging out over here. We're fighting the Cerberus, the elusive man. All right, capital encounter. Um, what do we need to do? Uh, uh, very humanity first vessel that we're fighting against. Um, okay, stock action. So that's a plus one to my dice roll. We're going to do, uh, we have to do the um, combat. I have my reinforced armor. Now I'm wishing I got those magnetic mines. All right, so eight, five, six, seven, 
eight. Look at that. Reinforced armor came through. It was the ringer here. So uh, I did not get damaged. And now I'm attacking them, contributing my crew, which is three. The stock action is four. Uh, I have nothing else. So plus four to this dice roll. And I need ten. So six, ten. Look at that. Cerberus is done. Take that. Telling me humanity first. Man, how good was the Lucid Man? I'm playing through Mass Effect again, like everyone else, because it's amazing. Um, and because that's a stock, I didn't get any of the bad stuff up here. Uh, but that is going to impact how I take my turn. Uh, so that was this encounter. This goes into our fail pile. We're going to do our placement. Uh, another lull turn. Two, two, and a three. Uh, so two can actually get these. I don't have any action points. I could axe one of these in order to get an action point. I'm not going to do that at this time. Um, so two, we're going to put this, I don't know, closer to me. Uh, and one more up here on the adventures. I'm accruing some more. I need to do some adventures to get some treasures. Uh, I guess maybe I want to take an adventure action before real bad stuff starts piling up here. Um, so adventure is something that I can do for f only one on a lull turn. So I do want to do it now. So I'm going to have my second officer give me plus one action. And I'm going to take the adventure action, which only costs one during a lull turn. And we are going to adventure up here. And I regret to say this, but I'm actually going to uh, be looking at adventuring uh, in the rule book. Um, oh wait, plus X for exerting any or all ship resources allowed by the card. Um, and then plus X, uh, for adventure and or Nautilus upgrade cards used to modify the results. And minus one for any warships present, which there aren't any warships present. But I want to double check treasure acquisition. You'll allow me to do that, right? You're here for the ride. <laughs> Just chilling with me up here in Alaska. All right. Two action points or one during a lull turn. Draw the top card from the adventure deck along the right side of the game board. Um, perform that card's activity and afterward collect one resource or one treasure token for each treasure available gemstone on top of the adventure deck, returning those to the stock. I want to do it. I mean, four treasures. That's That sounds very important. Okay. So our card here, it's just one of the event cards. Oh, and it's a, it's a science. Even better. I'm blinded by the science. All right, it's a play. Place a treasure available token in each of the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans. If the Nautilus is in or a single move action away from either of these oceans, pass and collect one treasure. Uh, gemstones on the map are unaffected. So uh, we're going to play this uh, immediately. Um, so treasure available on Western Pacific and Indian Oceans. On the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans. On each of the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans. Western Pacific. I think it, it overspills. And Indian Oceans. Right there. Okay. And then if the Nautilus is in or a single move away from either of these oceans... Um, pass and collect uh, one. I am a single move. Uh, I am not a single move away from. Well, I guess I'm a hydro drive away from. I don't know. Each time you perform a move action, you can perform. So it's not in an adjacent ocean. Um, Single move action away. Okay, perfect. Yeah, single move action would allow me to 
So if I'm in, um, then pass and collect one treasure. The gemstones are unaffected. So I get one treasure. So one treasure, looking away, and what do we have? A plus one, nice. And this is passed, which is super nice. And then we're going to collect four treasures here. Oh, that's sexy. Oh, that's what I wanted all along. Um, let's see what our treasures are one at a time, shall we? Okay, we have a plus three. Nice. We have a plus two. We have a plus three. I was hoping for some like rerolls and stuff, but and we have a plus three. Hey, those are fodder for doing other stuff. So I'm not too disappointed by those treasure acquisitions. That was a good turn. All right, so let's transition back. All right. Thank you, Richard. Uh, it's wonderful having you here. Uh, yeah, get it to the table. Uh, oh, get out your, the Ultimate Edition and play it. Um, I hope it's a good upgrade. I mean, I'm hoping to get the Ultimate Edition here as well. I am loving this game. I know I'm going at such a slow pace because I'm like explaining things and managing cameras and I'm kind of in this condensed environment and everything. Uh, but it's been wonderful and thanks for keeping me honest on a couple of those moves and everything. I uh, hope you uh, um, are able to uh, get that to the table and report in. Tell me how you did. Do science if you haven't done science yet. Okay, so got everything covered there. That was our lull turn. We're on to a new turn here. Okay, we're going to uh, play uh, Mass Execution. Well, that's a bummer. Fail and gain 1d3 of notoriety. Well, I guess the cat's out of the bag now. So 1d3 to notoriety. One, two, and that means well, this is a behind the scenes moment. You get to add more notoriety. One, two, and this here. These end up going in our ship container. I've become such a dad. Those sounds, I make that whenever I like ratchet things around. Okay, uh, so this just goes in the fail pile. That's miserable. Didn't want that, but it happened. Okay, and then placement. Five and three, I'll take it. That gives me two actions. Anytime I can get two actions on a turn, I'll gladly take it. Oh man, I should have taken that free action to kill Ariel. Because I think I can use steam torpedoes on um, any action phase. Doesn't have to be a lull turn, or a non-lull turn. Okay, so one, three, and five. Um, so we have one has no capacity. So one is going to get a ship, potentially one of those blue ships. No, just a really nasty yellow one. Uh, three is up here and three does have capacity. So token down there. Uh, and then five is up here, no capacity. So it has to be one of those. Let's look at our ship. Britannia. Well, Britannia, let's consolidate. A non-warship, which is nice. Okay, cool. All right. Warships are the ones with the red tokens up there. All right, I have two actions that I can do on this turn. I don't have anything that's going to give me a bunch of bonus actions. Um, and anything I need to pay attention to, if I'm in the Indian Ocean, uh, then I can take my Indian Ocean action and gain a Nemo. I get my Nemos. The Korea incident, I can help out and reduce my, um, my notoriety, which my notoriety under science as my main goal uh, only takes me up to here. If I get to this level, then I lose the game. Uh, and then Vanacoro, uh, pass and collect two treasures in any Pacific Ocean. 
Uh, really, you should have done that back over here. Um, but we'll get back over there. I think for now, um, we're going to try and just steam torpedoes in this land against the South Atlantic. I got seven steam torpedoes. Got them. That's one notoriety up here. And then uh, that was a free action. We're going to move. Do I want to move yet? No, while I'm down here, I'm going to use both actions uh, and contribute my crew and contribute a plus three treasure in order to try and obtain an upgrade. So I have three six to my roll, which I didn't really need to spend that plus three. Um, so now I can buy something uh, for one fewer. Uh, I don't really need to buy something for one fewer. Maybe I should have saved that treasure, uh, but we're going to get these magnetic mines. Um, and that way I have them covered. I have a good amount of science going on. And that's all my actions. Yeah, new turn. You can tell my enthusiasm is waning. You're you're hanging out with me pretty late. Eh, it's only 1038. It's not so late. All right. Uh, another keep card. Science tag. Love it. Uh, a pearl worth 10 million. All right. If I pass this, using my crew, a win in the Indian Ocean for one action. Um, so more Indian Ocean potential, uh, then I can pass, put this in the fail pile and get three treasures. Um, but at game's end, if unused, then I just get this in my pass pile, which is nice if I don't need those treasures, but I could sell it. That's so thematic. It's connecting that I could be selling this pearl that's worth 10 million. I already have the pearl. I'm keeping the card. Okay. Transition. Placement. Three and a two. That is a miserable one action. We're placing on three, two, and two. Okay, so three can place here. I guess two would have placed there. So three is now going to place one of these jabronis. Star of India. Ooh, that one is a lot of notoriety if you crush it. Going to go up there for now. And then <laughs> I'm not getting a lot of points for sinking ships here. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to three, a two, and a two. I guess I also had to do another two up here. A two. Mm, I'm just going to leave that on the board over there. I'm at the point where I have enough upgrades. I kind of want to just avoid some of the worst battles, pick off the ships as I can, and then accrue treasures and that kind of stuff in order to get as many points as I can. All right, so I have one action at this point. Um, there are a couple actions that are really worth taking, uh, especially just spending an action to gain two treasures because those could be really helpful if I'm in any Pacific Ocean. Um, there's no Pacific Ocean that I particularly want to fight, uh, but I do want to start sinking some ships. So I'm going to take a move action to move two up here to the European seas. Done with my turn and take a new turn. All right, here we go. We're on act three, the end of it. All right, act three, the Nautilus went at a frightful pace. Now I roll three white dice and I get whatever two that I wanna utilize. All right, change Nemo's motive. So at this point, I could change this here to war if I wanted to, or I can choose any Nautilus upgrade that wasn't selected at the beginning of the game and put it over here in my purchasables. Um, and then uh, I add the orange reinforcement ship group to the draw pool. So Hercules, Hercules is going over here 
all these are going to the draw pool. Uh, and now I'm rolling three white dice uh, and one black dice to begin each placement, choosing any two of the white dice to determine action points or a lull turn. But I am still placing chips based off of all the dice that I rolled. So it is accelerating like crazy. Uh, Nautilus upgrade. My options. I can get a strength and prow. Uh, plus one DRM to all Nautilus non-torpedo attacks. So that would have been really nice. Um, though electro-powered crew armor. You may either use this card once during each bold for plus one DRM after a dice roll. Or you may remove this card for plus two DRM after a dice roll. This is pretty good, and it's a science. Um, the double hole is nice, ignoring all sixes. Um, plus one DRM to all non-torpedo attacks is kind of insane. Um, and then the electro-powered crew armor. Um, I don't think I should start making a bunch of bold actions because I'm going to end up losing the game based off of notoriety. But I do want that. That's six points right there for me. Uh, whereas this is only two, three points. This is six points and it contributes to those bold actions. I should be bold. Plus one DRM to all non torpedo attacks. You know what? Let's play to science, and I can afford this one now. We're doing it. Okay, electro-powered crew armor. We're in it to win it. Ooh. I'm actually recording on this. That was a, a long video on my iPhone off to the side. All right. What do we got, fam? What are we doing? Uh, we got to draw another card because now we have Act 3 is drawn and we're in our final stages attack of the giant squid i mean this is exactly what everyone knows about Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea right they're like hey it's about this uh ship captain who's eccentric uh and is maybe a good guy and he has this awesome ship and then it gets attacked by a giant squid i think that's because of the disney movie uh that that's so well known all right, crew and hole, so I could get plus four on this. Uh, this is a test and collect two treasure. Let's do it. Three, four, and... Oh, oh. <laughs> that was so bad. Um, and uh, so I have four, five, six, seven. Um, and this is bad enough that I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to lose both Ned Land and Professor Aranax for plus one and plus two DRM after a roll. I hate to do that, but I gotta. They're, they're gone. One of them is a science, uh, but that gives me two treasures. Uh, it was such a harsh penalty if I didn't do that. Any elite Nemo strategist can tell me if that was a terrible idea. All right, what do we got as far as our treasures? Um, and that's a pass. I mean, it is points. Uh, plus one action or keep for two. Uh, and Mariana Trench. Um, that's something new that I haven't encountered before. So we're going to have to take a peek at the solid green and what Mariana Trench represents. Nemo's War it does not shy away from specific items. Um, so do we have Mariana Trench? If anyone wants to uh, Google uh, Nemo's War Mariana Trench treasure and tell me what the BGG result is, uh, then that would be great. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave that there. There are a few extra tokens, which I know apply to like actions and stuff, um, or to event cards. So Mariana Trench might be one of them, but the uh, opaque green 
A wonder victory points. Okay, it's just a, a special type of victory points. That's right. So wonder scene are times four. So that was worth it. That was, that's four points uh, for the Mariana Trench there. That's a four-point treasure. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it was a treasure. Okay, cool. So now we do our placement turn. These go back. I didn't want to lose all that stuff. And then lose some more crew and failure on top of that. I roll all this. Okay, this is where things get good. I have a five and a two, but five, two, three, six. Uh, so two needs to put something out. This ship, Prince Albert. Um, we're just going to say this goes over here. Uh, three. Is going to be up here, up in the North Atlantic, in the ATL. Chance, you never had a chance. We're going to put you right here. And then five, five. We have nowhere left on the board. All of this is populating. So uh, what do we got? Ooh, the Hercules. Um, I do need to make my way over to the Indian Ocean. Um, and this will give me a target if I'm over there. So we'll allow that for now to be right there. I guess, I guess we'll leave it where I'm at. Because that's the five. And then... Pequod, plus one Nemo. There's so many things to destroy if I put this over here, but we're going to put this over here. Okay, uh, and so difference between a five and two is going to be three. I have three actions in order to take my turn. First thing that I wanna do, um, I'm going to see if I can take out something with um, my steam torpedoes, I need a six or better on steam torpedoes. Yep, six or better. Let's hope for the best. Whew. Destroying this guy. Um, and I could still work towards all these upgrades. Uh, towards the end of the game, it might actually be better to start working towards uh, these. Uh, this is uh, the European Seas. Um, I thought that's where this... Okay. I'm pretty sure I was not in the South Atlantic when I killed the Glasgow. No, I was. Uh, and I put it over here. Okay, um, no, we're going to put this up here. Uh, and that's uh, plus two on my notoriety. And then we're going to um, I'm going to take care of the Syria here or try to. So that's plus one, two, three, four on my stock attack. I just need a seven or better. Um, so five, six, totally got it. Plus one crew. Uh, and this guy is going into the European seas uh, after I take his crew for me. Or maybe he was, oh, he was a slaver. So I freed the slaves. That makes sense. Okay, so not only do I recover that, but I'm at max crew. Um, I'm going to take a move action to go over here. Uh, to the Atlantic, uh, and we're going to uh, do a stock attack against this guy. See if we can recover some Nemo. Plus one Nemo. This is a tale of two Nemos. Um, once again, contributing crew. So I'm at four, five, six, seven, I need nine. That's bad news. <laughs> okay um that's okay that's okay uh so 
uh, Nautilus here. I did the attack. I did not hit. So then I miss. I get plus one. And then I'm going to lose one wrist resource. That could have been worse at uh, minus one there. Um, and... Uh, the board is getting so populated that I am going to lose this uh, treasure for plus one action. We're going to make it happen. Um, we're going to risk it again. Same thing. Stock action. Let me let me double check my monstrous design. Gain one fewer um, notoriety per ship token that you sink. Okay. So I still get it for the failed attack. Super got it this time. Uh, and this guy's in the Indian Ocean. Uh, he's going to go over here. And that's plus one Nemo now. And I recover that. And we got all the Nemos we need up in this sucker. And that's our turn. New card for our phase. It's an immediate play. Play and get plus one notoriety, then place one treasure in each of the six major oceans. Uh, plus one treasure, okay. And so one notoriety happens no matter what. Looking pretty dismal up there. I need to do some things in order to not lose the game. Uh, and treasure in each of the major oceans. So let's think this through. Uh, one can place down here. One is going to go to up here. Uh, two cannot place to anywhere. Three can place to five. Four can place here. Five cannot place to anywhere. Six can place to nowhere. Okay. Uh, placement turn. Two, three, five, five. Coming up on your five, five, five. We got those over here. We got a two and a three. I need to remember to do these at the right time. Okay, so um, two cannot place to anywhere. So we're doing the Gonj, a whaler. Plus one treasure. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. Um, Shenandoah. Okay. Uh, then three can place over to here. And then a five can place over to here. And then a six, uh, five can place over to here to the six. Because the Arabian Tunnel is open, I think we still can do that for placement because it's the exact same symbol as implied by here. Um, so uh, we got all that. Uh, we're definitely going to pick a five and a two, giving us three. And we need to start thinking about how we're going to reduce some of our notoriety. Um, so uh, let's uh, place some notoriety on here and also think about uh, if we're in any Pacific Ocean, if we're in the Indian Ocean, um, I may pass to gain one Nemo, one more Nemo, uh, and uh, plus one no variety. Okay, so we're going to do this. It is more notoriety, uh, but we get one more Nemo, all the Nemos up on our boat. That's a pass card. Um, then let's do an insight action, shall we? We haven't had a chance to do much of that yet. So our inside action over here uh, is that uh, we can, uh, on a 9 to 11, we can place a cube and minus one notoriety or revolt. Revolt? Revolt? Reboot. <laughs> we can re revolt, place one cube and minus two notoriety. Um, and we can exert one ship resource. We can spend treasure tokens, uh, plus one with arcane library, plus two with sunken treasure fleet. Um, 
and minus one for each revealed ship token of any type, which we don't have any of those, and minus one for any um, uprising cube already placed in that ocean, which we don't have any. So what we need to do here is we need to get ourselves this arcane library. <laughs> would probably have been a better idea. Um, but that's a, I guess we're not so close to losing the game. We could stand to lose five notoriety. I think I'm going to spend my two actions here uh, and I'm going to try to get this arcane library. So I have plus three to my action. Um, I wanted that electro-powered crew armor. I still want that. <sighs> I really want that. And we potentially could be ending the game here relatively soon in a few more turns. But no, 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 no. This Arcane Library, mm, it's plus one wonder, so it is four points. Oh, and six points. Only cost two, and I am going to kill more things. So let's go for the Arcane Library. Let's do what I was thinking of doing. So three, I got this, and I got some treasures that I can contribute. Let's do a plus two on this one here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, why didn't I contribute a plus three? Uh, so that means I can just gain uh, an upgrade. Um, so I could change it to the Electro Power Crew Armor if I wanted at this point, but we're going to go for that Arcane Library. Um, so now we can have more efficient inside actions uh, and more efficient search actions. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm good with that for a turn. I could get two extra actions off of this, but I'm not going out yet. Okay, new turn. Aranax's determination. I think Aranax is toast. Sorry, Aranax. You were old news over here. Blip. You gutted. Okay, so test 11, Nautilus and, or uh, Nemo and crew, so that would be a plus five. That's pretty good. And I can pass and immediately return one previously sacrificed character back to play if available. You do not recover any lot. Well, hey, Aranax could come back. Um, fail, sacrifice the Professor Aranax character if available or gain. Uh, well, <laughs> there's our notoriety that we didn't want to have. Uh, so we're going to try to have our plus five. And let's test it. Six, seven, eight. Aranax is back in the game. Yeah. All right. There we go, Aranax. And then this card is now in our pass. And we can move these back over here. And we're in the best shape. All right. Um, let's do our placement. So many dice. All right, one, one, six. That is a huge turn. Five action tokens. That's exactly what I want. What I don't want is the fact that we are in a position where we're going to be adding so many ships to the board. All right, so one at a time. We have this guy. Um, he'd be pretty easy pickings for me over here. I could add him. He's connected. So we're going to do that. Uh, then this guy, what we have. Um, we're going to add him over here. Now these start flipping over eventually to be really bad things. And if we can't flip over anything uh, and we can't place anything uh, as we go through these, then we lose the game. It's gone really soup sandwich. We're done. <laughs> it's over. Uh, not even worth trying. The tyrants have won. Though you could argue that uh, even with his idealism, um, Nemo trying to exert his moral philosophy onto the world uh, is tyrannical um, because he's doing it through violence, right? He's kind of like enforcing his own perspective and point of view at threat of death to uh, whatever opposition with no like oversight. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, there we go, uh, is up in five. Yeah, 
It's up in five. And then one more for six. The Thermopylae. Hmm. I don't really want to put it in my spot because uh, in order to do insight actions, I need spots where there are no existing cubes. So we're going to put that right here for right now. Yeah. Okay. So now I have five actions. First thing that we're going to do, we're going to try to take out the general grant. Um, and I'm going to do that as my free action with my steam torpedoes. Ugh. Is there ever any doubt? Um, I probably could have done that in a better way to not lose a bunch of uh, notoriety, actually. I could have just done that as a stock action. Um, okay, uh, well that's over there. And now we need to uh, do our, we have so many Nautilus upgrades. And counting points is going to be kind of crazy at the end of the game here. Um, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, plus one DRM when performing a search or inside action. Um, and then we're going to do that insight. Okay, so insight is one action. We're going to place a cube. We're shooting for um, uh, getting a 12 or higher. So we can... Exert one ship resource, that's plus three. And we could do treasure and we have one for this. So we have three, four for our arcane library. Um, I'm going to use a plus three. Maybe, oh, that doesn't go back there. Maybe that's a bad idea, but we have seven off the bat. Well, I'm glad I did. <laughs> Eight, nine, ten. Um, that could have been better. Um, but uh, we're going to place one of these here and just lose one of these. Okay. Then we're going to move our butts over to here. Um, and then we're going to try to do the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sacrificing another three. We're doing it. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's terrible. That's truly abysmal. Uh, so we're once again only losing uh, one uh, of these. It's not the end of the world, I guess, but uh, it's a lot worse than I wanted it to be. Um, especially at the sacrifice of six points there. And uh, at this point, I could... That was one action to take that one, one, okay. So I could get this crew, electro-powered crew armor um, which I think is really going to be worth it uh, because I might end up having to do some attacks, though I likely won't be doing any bold attacks uh, anytime soon, but the science is kind of where it's at. So let's go ahead and do that. Contributing three, uh, and I don't have anything else to contribute uh, for, for this treasure. And... Uh, so I get it for one cheaper. Nice. That worked out well. Electro-powered crew armor is ours. We have so many Nautilus upgrades. I mean, we're like the James Bond of, well, the, the Bond's car, I guess. Um, you know Bond drove a Saab in a movie? That's crazy to me. Okay, so I have all of these, uh, and that is, uh, I did... The insight, move, insight, upgrade was two actions. We're done with our turn. So new turn. Transition. All right, immediate play. 
fail and add the red reinforcement ship group uh, to the ship draw pool. Uh, but before doing so, discard one random red for each of the first three notoriety levels not yet achieved. Um, for each of the first three notoriety defeat levels. Uh, so that's one, two, three. I still haven't met them. So we're going to discard um, one ship for each of those here. So of these guys are going away and all the rest of these. And then B, add one random undiscarded red ship to the Nautilus's current and fight it immediately. All right, I'll take the back one. This is the free stock action. The Invincible is coming after me. It knows that I've been watching. Oh, man, that has three notoriety grain off of it. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, this is the rising action. Uh, this is a fixed card in kind of the, the bottom third of the deck here. Um, invincible. It's a battleship. Stock action. Stock attack. Uh, so it is a battleship. What's my magnetic awesomeness do? Okay, non torpedo attack. Yep, warship. E I.e., those with armored iron or battle in their class. Battleship. Oh yeah, magnetic mines. I've got it. Nautilus attacks first. So I got to get a 13 here. Ugh. That's um, bad news. Uh, and then I have, well, this is um, the monstrous design. Um, uh, steam torpedoes, arcane library, fog machine. I thought I had an awesome... Prowl. I guess not. That's the electro powered crew armor. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to do an attack. So I have one, two, three, four for my crew. Uh, and I get to attack first. So I guess the magnetic mines are coming into handy here. I need a nine or better. Six, seven. Professor Anorax, you came through for me, baby. Eight, nine, plus two DRM after a roll because I did not want to fail that one and then have them attack me. Um, and also the stock attack means I only gain two notoriety out of that, which is amazing. Uh, and this guy goes up here, so I guess I can end up buying my fog machine. Whew, hollow explosion. That was nasty. Uh, this goes into the fail pile no matter what. And then we do our placement. Ooh. It's a lot of sixes. Okay, so four. Um, four is right here. And then six. I'm getting some Iron Maiden in my head. Six, 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 the number of the beast. All right, uh, what do we got? <laughs> we still have an Agamemnon in the crew, a little Whitesy. Little White Sea is going up here. That's one of my sixes. Two of my sixes. The Bellerophon. Bellerophon. That's a nasty ship. The European seas are in bad shape. I don't. I do not want to do battle there. Uh, and then uh, the Bellaquace. I think that's how you say it. An ironclad ship. Uh, in six or one, uh, let's go ahead and make that in six. I can do some battle over there. I can take care of that. And especially if there's stock attacks, I can still clear them out and not have any probs. No problemo. No problema. Um, more importantly, uh, I guess I should have chosen this for either a lull turn or not lull turn. Because I only got two actions. Um... That would have been a better lull turn. Uh, and that way I wouldn't have had to include this black dice up here. Uh, this black dice is if you're on a higher level notoriety, you reach this level, you have to start using it. But one, two, three of the conditions that you, um, your motives that you can play against, 
you would have lost by the time that you're playing that. So only if you were fighting in war would it accelerate to another black dice. Okay, um, I need to find ways of reducing my notoriety still. I need to gain some treasure, uh, which will help me reduce my notoriety. Um, do I have anything over here? Um, treasure. Uh, while the Nautilus is in any Pacific Ocean, spend an action to pass and collect two treasure. Uh, let's get over to a Pacific Ocean. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're going to go over to this Pacific Ocean. Uh, we're going to uh, pass this Um, pass list and collect two treasure is an action and hope that it's good we have uh, discard to gain one hole or keep for three points or one point well I guess those are discard fodder and that's it for my actions I can take so we're on to a new turn uh, as master wishes if conceal is still in play nope um during any one future action phase spend uh afterwards uh or if when council is not in play fail and at game's end pass if unused well that's a quick failure we know exactly what's up with that placement we have five, one, and two, so I cannot do a lull turn. Now things are starting to get pretty desperate. One um, cannot place anywhere, so we have a America, the good freighter America. It's going to go on the Atlantic. That seems like an appropriate thing. Uh, and then two, um, where I'm at right now, the Cuddy Sark. Yes, oh, I should have taken my free action in order to steam torpedo them. Uh, four over here is a battleship, the Audacious. Let's just go ahead and put the Audacious in Cape Horn. Oh wait, I can't replace an existing ship. What am I doing? Um, let's put it up here for reasons. Um, because I can still find spots in order to put these cubes out and reduce my notoriety, which I think is going to be the critical thing in order to not lose this game at this point. Um, and then uh, five. Five is an orange ship. Um, maybe I should have made better choices. Which is going to go right there. Okay. So... On my turn, um, I have four actions that I can take. Uh, first thing that I'm going to do hmm, Eastern Pacific doesn't have any room for uh, my unplaced uprising cubes. That is tenuous. Um, Let's go to the South Atlantic, see if we can contribute some more over here. Uh, though before I go, uh, I'm going to try and torpedo this guy. Uh, torpedoed. Uh, and he's in the Eastern Pacific. Uh, Eastern Pacific. Uh, and that's two notoriety. I'm awful close. Um game one and be one away uh, but instead uh, I'm going to move over here uh, I'm going to do one um, so I have plus one for the arcane library but I have minus one because there's already a cube there uh, plus three for the crew uh, so I have three uh, and I'm going to contribute uh, this plus three to my roll to try and put out a cube with an insight action. Uh, so that's six, 12. Nice, that's what I want. Um, that's going to be one of these cubes here. 
and that is minus one, two to my um, notoriety. I could try that again, but failure on inciting an action is actually more notoriety. It's dangerous to do that. Uh, so I'm going to use a search action to try to get some treasure out here. Uh, so the search, uh, we're going to do three uh, and four because of my arcane library. There's no uh, ship tokens here. So plus four, uh, that's six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, so we have 13, collect two treasures. Nice. And our treasures are oh, these two. Yeah, Cleopatra's Palace and a two. Well, points aren't going to matter if I don't survive to the end of the game. So we'll see how this actually goes. This goes away and we are going to now go to the next turn. All right. Event 27, test nine, Nemo only. This is a mandatory. The Earth wants not new continents, but new men. That is one of my favorite quotes and such a great illustration there. The darkened eyes and everything. Ah, the antiquing is so wonderful. Okay. Um, well, this is a mandatory action. Uh, so I'm going to test my Nemos. Uh, my Nemos give me two. And I may reset the Nemo ship resource marker to its determined space if I desire, which determined, well, actually, I'm, I'm already well, way better than determined. Um, if I get closer to Nemo dying, uh, I actually contribute more to my dice rolls, uh, but I get closer to dying. Okay, so that's two plus eight, ten. Uh, we're going past this. Okay, and then our placement. Ooh, yipes. Okay, let's see how that actually pans out on the board. One, two, four, and six. So one, we have another guy. We're going to put him right over here. Okay, and then two. I can't do a lull turn, but I will get uh, five action points, which is nice. Two. Um, actually, two isn't one of these. Two could go right there. Uh, and then four is this guy right here. Um, well, the Koenig Wilhelm uh, with some umlauts on there. Loving it. That one, uh, I'm going to end up having to kill some ships here soon, uh, which is not a good situation. There is room for one more uh, of my insight tokens to be put here, but uh, it's minus one to my roll for each insight token that's already there. So my best bet for inciting some revolutions is coming over here. Uh, or finding a, a new area, maybe killing this one. I'm, I hate to tell you this, fam, but I, I'm getting into some bad shape. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put this right here for now. I'm sure there's some uh, strategic reasoning why I may want to do certain locations versus another that I'm not seeing and experience is going to teach me that. But all right, uh, the Idaho. It's going up here. Um, Duncan, Idaho. It's way up there. Can't escape this without a Dune reference. You knew you were in for it. Okay, five actions. What am I going to do with my five actions? Um, well, I already got my treasures. I pretty much all got all the upgrades that I need. Killing ships is a bad plan at this point. Um, unless I can just kill them in order to, uh, without raising my levels too bad. So for right now, I could travel 
Where's some easy pickings? Um, there's a lot of cubes I could place here, and these are only one at a time, one, um, uh, one notoriety. So I'm going to move over here for one action. I'm going to move up here for two actions. I'm in the Western Pacific, and um, we're going to try and... God, those are so... So there's one. Um, those are so hard to beat. Failure to beat these is going to be really bad news. Um, so um, I'm actually going to take that, that second movement on that second action. So that was one, two, three, four. Coming down here, I'm going to uh, do an inside action down here. Um, probably should have attempted to kill something with my torpedoes down there, but uh, inside action, uh, I'm going to contribute a plus two and see what I can get out of it. So I have uh, three, four, five, 10, 11, 12. Awesome, minus two notoriety. Uh, that's what I like to see. Okay, and that's um, giving me, that's, that's keeping me in good shape there. Now is the part where I try to decide what I want to do. I, I think I got to start killing these guys in order to hopefully get my notoriety down in these spots. I don't know if that's going to be possible, uh, but let's try to get a lock on the Western Pacific. All right, so I'm going to fight the... Who do I want to fight first here? Um... Let's fight you, the house car, your ironclad. And that means that my magnetic fields uh, allow me to attack first. So let's do an action. We're going to do a stock attack on you. Uh, so I attack first and I have three, four for my stock attack. And six is 10, exactly enough in order to take him out. No notoriety gain uh, because of my, um, because of my awesome monstrous design. We're in the Western Pacific. So that is dead. That's all my actions. And that's going to lead me to a next turn. All right, the Lost Continent. Um, so this is another test. We have to do it. Nemo and crew. So that's plus five to our action, which is nice. Pass and collect plus two treasure or gain one Nemo. All the Nemos. I would have them all. Um, who doesn't want more Nemos in their life? Uh, so that's eight, 13. Super got it. Plus two treasure is absolutely what we're going to do here. These are not treasure tokens. These are treasure tokens. Plus four and a plus two. That's going to come in handy for <laughs> when we are uh, trying to take out um, our, our notoriety here. All right, and this just goes in the pass pile. Let's roll some dice. Actually kind of want a lull turn, and it is not giving it to me. Okay, so transition over here and yeah, what do we got oh, that's a treasure token that didn't get discarded okay um or didn't get discarded but it is an available treasure token i got mixed up in here okay so uh, that's actually a really bad turn i'm only going to get three actions um starting on three so i think we can just admit that the north atlantic is just aft, right? We're going to put you right there, in the North Atlantic. Five European seas, also looking horrible. Hannah Moore, done. Uh, five again, um, cannot place anywhere, so let's uh, check our reference. Let's make sure we're doing it right. Uh, placing ships, spread out, cannot do. Reveal, cannot do, get hostile. So there's nowhere to place hidden. Um, 
then flip over one white non-warship token there to show its gray warship side. Um, okay, so white is now the Hannah Moore is no more is now the independent ind ind independentia ia. I don't know. Pronunciation is hard. I don't know all these historical ships, where if all these are historical ships that were actual ship names that the, uh, Jules Verne referenced, uh, or if all of these were referenced, I mean, clearly not every single one of these ships was referenced in the, the, the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It's been a long time. I'm rereading it now, but surely not all of these were referenced. I don't know. Hop in the chat. Let me know. Okay, so uh, that was our five. Uh, then we have another five. So Britannia becomes the Delaware. And six is going to become... What are we on here? Six is... Can populate a hidden ship token over here. Okay. Uh, we have two actions. Three actions because of our six and three. Um, and making sure... Uh, placement phase, place ship tokens, use differential to determine action points. Great. So, um, I think I want to continue killing ships. I think I'm going to do that. Uh, so let's do a stealth attack. The Idaho here still attacks me, and it is not a warship. Uh, it is not armored, iron, or battle. So I actually, Kotetsu, I could do a, um, let's do the Kotetsu first. So I can do a stock attack, Kotetsu doesn't attack me. Um, and so I have three, four against the Kotetsu. Oh, that was bad. Four, five, six, seven. Um, so in that case, uh, I miss, I lose my wrist resource, um, and also I go up one on notoriety, and then they attack me. Uh, I have plus one on this roll, their attack is a seven, uh, so nine. Uh, they did not get me. Do I want to risk attacking them again? I still have the crew. It's the same chance as I had last time. Still seems reasonable to do because I need to get these cubes out here. Uh, so let's do it. Uh, let's risk that crew again. Let's skin that smoke wagon and see what happens. Okay, so I have two, uh, that's four, four, eight, nine. Oh, that was a terrible roll. Um, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. I don't have anything uh, to help me on that. Uh, if I did a bold action, then I would have gotten it, but I did not. Um, so I guess I'm going to get one of these. I'm going to lose that crew, and then they're going to attack me for five, six. So they actually do hit me, and that's two uh, that I'm going to lose uh, a, um, I'm going to lose another crew, problematic, and a hole. Fight and trim. Okay. Wow. Um, at this point, I just don't know what to do. I need to burn to the end of the game. Um, I don't want to take another one of those actions. I have less of a likelihood to succeed at this point. I'm going to save an action point in case we have a lull turn coming up. So now let's transition to final turn. Uh, or not final turn, but next turn. Shakedown maneuvers. All right, it's a test. A crew and hull, uh, which is now only plus three, and we need a ten. Um, but this would be a very good one to pass. Um... I have nothing to contribute other than plus three. 
five, six, seven, eight. Bummer. All right. Uh, no rerolls in sight. I've used up everything that I have. Uh, so failure uh, and lose one Nemo or lose one action. Um, only if you have one saved or gain plus two notoriety. Do not want to do that. Uh, so we're going to lose one Nemo. We got an abundance of Nemos up here. Uh, and we lose the wrist crew and hull, which is terrible. Um, and we lose out on those points. But what do points matter if we're doing anything at this point? Okay, placement. Uh, why did we not get a lull turn? We need those lull turns. Okay, so one uh, cannot place anything over here. Uh, so this is going to put uh, a little scrappy do. Oh, we need to transition here. That's putting a token over here in the Central Pacific. Uh, the three is going to put one. Can't put one in there. We can put one in four. Okay. And then five is going to put one. Cannot put one anywhere there. And five, do we flip whites in adjacent areas as well? I've come so far. All right, uh, placing ship tokens. Flip one white non-warship token there to show its gray war side. If there is nowhere to place a hidden ship token in that or neighboring, all the ocean spaces and the oceans contain a revealed ship. And no white warships among them. Among them. See. So I think... I think I can reveal gray war sh ships in adjacent areas. If chat knows this, let me know. Uh, what is that one X on the right? Uh, one X on the right. I don't know what you're asking here, Diogo. Uh, one X, one X. We got X's all over the place. Uh, so let me know <laughs> if you uh, have an X. Uh, okay, so um, uh, I flipped one there, which is going to be a five. Uh, and then, uh, oh, hey, Krish, welcome back. Thanks for dropping in on another one of our live streams. And then six uh, can place one over here. Okay. Done. All right. Now we are in bad luck. We're at five actions. But what are these five actions going to be? We don't really have a lot of areas where we can put out cubes that aren't super populated at this point. Um, I guess I could contribute huge treasures like to this spot. Or I could try to take out this guy. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to go one, two, moving over to the Cape of Good Hope here. Um, and in the Cape of Good Hope, we're going to uh, first attempt to take out this guy with a um, stock action stock on the thermopylae it's so 300 up in here all right stock action we got our two dice we're committing plus two three and we need an eight so we need five or better on this dice roll pray for me here guys all right all right the one x is when you are on the iphone side of the camera i'd assume it's the zoom uh yeah if that's showing up maybe um that was showing up but yeah this is a new live stream setup that i'm trying here trying to get more uh, things going on all right i managed to take it out cape of good hope i don't know if these fall into i'll double check that uh or if it has to go into salvage because this isn't 
uh, any of the primary ship areas. Um, let me double check on um, attacking here. Bold attacks, search, combat. Okay, combat, sunken ships. Showing its side of the ship token that you actually sank on the tonnage in the leftmost on the major ocean where it sank. If it sank in a transitional, you choose either of the major connected. Okay, so um, we'll say Thermopylae, uh, Indian Ocean, or South Atlantic. Let's go South Atlantic. Why not? Okay, so that was uh, one action to move there, one there. Uh, we go up one. Uh, because we go up one, uh, we're going to spend an action committing this four treasure uh, to allow us to have plus four, uh, plus two, risking Nemo. Um, so we have plus six to our insight roll. Oh, so good. There we go. Get another cube up in here. Diamond mines. We're st sparking a revolution. Working man hero over here. Uh, minus two on our notoriety. Um, and then with our remaining actions, uh, we're going to do a search action here. Plus two from Nemo, plus one from our arcane library, uh, which we've had for quite some time. So plus three. Three, six, nine is a success. Collect one treasure from those diamond mines. What do we got? Retain. I can ax it to get another Nemo. We got tons of Nemos, but uh, four points is four points. I'm going to keep my one last action. And let's see here. Uh, we have another event. Um, our event is, oh yeah, I have the one X on there. That, I don't think that's always been up. Maybe it is. Um, I guess I can zoom in on there. Uh, okay, so when Nautilus is in any Pacific Ocean, you may fail to gain two crew and two notoriety or place one cube at that ocean. A game's end pass if unused. Uh, placing that cube... Um, I don't think it, it inherently gives me any reduction to my notoriety, uh, but getting two crew is really nice. Uh, but at this point, okay, you may fail to gain two crew and plus two notoriety or place one cube at that ocean. Um, no, I'm not going to do that, uh, but uh, I'll hold on to it. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. Let's try and get a lull turn up in here. Um, four and four. That's what I want. Okay, so lull turn. We're only going to place based off of white dice. Uh, so uh, lull turn. Place ship tokens for only for white dice. And let me double check my placements. I haven't uh, been doing too much uh, using the two or three white dice rolled so yes i would still place them okay so four still oh four can place a hidden ship nice and then four is going to be omaha not in my town uh and then uh six uh has to place here or up here that's going to be the Synop up here. Okay. Uh, and my four and four, uh, which I'm glad that I saved one of those. Um, we need to now uh, test for our uprising cubes. On mole turns, check. Uh, well, first we need to do the placement. The treasure would go on four. Uh, treasure would go up here and now we're going to check uprising cubes so everywhere where we have uprising cubes we're going to um, add the number of uprising cubes and revealed ships to the ocean and roll 1d6 uh, and if the result is greater than the total greater than or equal to no effect so automatically a one here 
this stays. No uprising cubes, none, 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 none. Uh, well, some. Uh, so three, four, five, and uh, either remove one cube connected to that ocean or gain that die roll result in uh, notoriety. So six, three, four, five, hey, it stays there. And then here, this one stays uh, because I can't roll less than a one. And that's it for that. Uh, so Lowell turn here, I have one action. What do I wanna do? Refit the Nautilus. I could try to rest to gain more crew. I could adventure, potentially gaining more treasure um, and if I get more treasure, that may be something that's going to help me. Um, and I can optionally, when I adventure, I can just not take that card. I can just put it on the bottom of the deck. I think. Let me double check that. Um, because that's important. Um, all right. Or, each, uh, or decline to perform that card's activity and simply return it face down to the bottom of the venture deck. And leave the treasure available gemstone uncollected. All right, that sounds great. I, I see no reason not to do that. Uh, so we're going to take a look at our adventure card, which is a play. I can fail it and place a sunken treasure fleet token and a treasure available token on a random major ocean. After you successfully search there, gain that ocean's treasure and the sunken search fleet, which grants you two additional silver uprising cubes, giving you 12 in total and plus two DRM for future insight actions. That's really good. Um, and so the sunken treasure token, I think is a special token here. Yeah, yeah, we got a sunken treasure fleet is this guy right here. So small, nice. So let's see if we can fail this um, and place the sunken treasure fleet. Um, and treasure available token on a random major ocean. Okay. That's going to be on four. Boom. Um, and I think the treasure available, I think it would follow the treasure available. Let's go there. Put it on my location. Let's double check it. It gives a reference of uh, per page 17. Um, so placing treasure. Okay. When an ocean gains a treasure, place it uh, to indicate this happy status. If it already has one, do the first possible item uh, in an adjacent ocean or do not add uh, treasure to the map. So I'm going to err on the side of thematically. This says to uh, place the treasure fleet token and a treasure available token on a random major ocean. Uh, I'm going to put it here on where I'm at because that treasure is um, the treasure fleet. Um, and that's my one action, but I still gain the treasure off of this. And we're going to get um, this here, plus two. Nice. Got to remember to transition these bad daddies. Uh, we, we should be right at the end of the game. Uh, that's it for my little turn. We're going to get another another action here. Event 32. We only have three cards left, so maximum of three turns left. Accident or incident? Test 9. I can commit the Nautilus, which is just a mere plus one at this point. Passing is keeping this card, and I may fail uh, after future 2d6 roll for plus two DRM as emergency help. Oh my God, that's amazing. Failure is losing a hole and fail uh, one keep card in my tableau without its benefits if you have any. Okay, well, 
Let's try it. I have no choice but to try it. Uh, that was a five, six. So I lose a hole and then the sacrificed hole. Um, that's a bummer. And we're going to fail that card and one keep card over here. Uh, the Korea incident. Okay, that's just going into the fail pile. And let's see what we got for our placement turn. One, two, three. Not a lull turn. <laughs> End of the game, I want lots of lull turns. Okay, one, two, and three here. Uh, one can't have any more in its land, but it is connected to South Pacific over here. I think it's South Pacific, and for some reason, I always think of we didn't start the fire. All right, one, now I'm going to flip a white in this vicinity. Uh, the Agamemnon is going to flip over to the Dictator. Fitting. All right, two. Two has room for all kinds of stuff. Uh, the Donau. Um, and then three is going to get one up here. Um, three is not connected to any unrevealed, so America is going to become the Lancaster. And we get a miserable two action points. Okay, but I do want this treasure. Um, so let's take a look here. What happened to... I had to put it in the fail pile, but... Um, looking again at the treasure fleet. Uh, after you successfully search there, gain that ocean's treasure and the sunken treasure fleet. So that's why I was thinking that the, the token uh, and the fleet needed to follow one another. Uh, which grants you two additional silver uprising cubes and plus two DRM on future insight actions. I don't see a reason not to attempt to get this sunken treasure fleet. Um... So we're going to risk some Nemo. And so I have plus three to this. Let's get plus three to my action. I have nothing else to contribute. Um, so that's one action point that we're spending. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten is success. I collect treasure, which is going to be... Mm. discard and lose one resource or character horrible horrible that was a terrible expedition that i went on <laughs> um we're going to lose nemo on this uh because he's actually going to start getting into some wild territory um yeah yeah we're going to lose a Nemo. Uh, and then uh, I do gain the Sunken Treasure Fleet. So I have plus two to my inside actions. Uh, I'm going to keep my one action point here uh, and just roll to the next turn. Let's see what we got. Uh, I should make sure... I have not come across the Finale card yet. should make sure that it's actually in there. All right, play. Lose one Nemo or one character to pass. Otherwise, immediately lose one action, if you currently have any, and fail. Um, I want to pass this, so we'll lose a Nemo. Um, and roll some dice. All right, one, two, three, five. Not happy that I don't have a little turn again. Uh, I'll get three actions this turn, though. I don't know what I'm really going to do with them. All right, starting to get into a real bad shape. So one is going to flip uh, Napoleon into uh, Redoubtable, the Ratatouille. Uh, two, oh, nope. One actually can't because that's not connected here. So let's double check our reference. I think we start doing the uh, colored ships are going to start flipping over uh, here once we start uh, revealing them. So placing ship tokens, uh, get hostile, go hunting. If there's nowhere to place a hidden ship token um, and there are no non-white warships among them, then draw a ship token from the ship draw pool. 
If it has a white non-warship side, place it on the map directly on its gray side. They're going hunting. If it does not have a non-white warship side, you must place it showing its non-purple side, a notoriety marker, has not yet passed 36 or showing its purple side after that threshold. We're not there. Um, and a hunting ship is placed on an empty ocean space anywhere in the world, regardless of proximity. If you place it on the same ocean as the Nautilus, you must immediately stock attack that ship for free as per event. If there are no open ocean spaces, you lose the game as an imperialist power victory. If there are no ship tokens left to draw. Okay. Wow. Uh, we, we may lose this this turn. Okay. Um, so this is going to be right here. Um, all right. They're going hunting. Well, I guess I could put this in my location. It's not such a bad one. And a stock action. It's iron. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and put it in my location. Uh, immediately do a stock. Uh, so that's the one. Uh, so I need to remember these things here. So stock, attack. Um, Nemo is going to contribute. I have three, four. I attack first because it's ironclad. And remember that this is a three and a five. Oh, man. Sorry, guys, I didn't transition. All right, three and a five, um, but this is four, eight. Uh, I did not pass that. Uh, so my notoriety goes up by one, um, and then they attack me. Um, but I do not get hurt by the attack, uh, and I lost a Nemo resource. Okay, and this was a three and a five. So back to placement. Now two over here. Two can definitely accept more in its territory. Um, and then uh, three is up here, is going to uh, exhaust. And then five uh, is going to... Uh, be up here it can flip this one okay I am likely going to die next turn if I don't start killing ships um, I have three actions one two three um, I don't even know where I should begin attacking um, okay I think we're going to start clearing out some of these in three um, or six. Okay, one is going to be up here. Now, if I attack, um, I want to make sure uh, if there's I have minus one to my dice roll. If there's any other there's any other ships present warships present um, we're going to do a stock attack here that's three uh, four against the ironclad uh, only three so I need seven on my dice they're easier ones to try and take out um, yeah, we're, we're trying it. All right, I got it. Boom. Um, and that was a stock attack, so uh, Indian Ocean, uh, that guy is gone, so I don't gain uh, any of the notoriety here. And then we're going to place that there. That goes back. I'm going to spend an action. One two uh, and spend an action Let's see I was at four so I moved attacked move so moved attacked moved and now I'm going to attack up here um, actually first 
Let's try my free action of my steam torpedoes to try and take out uh, the Pensacola. Yeah. Six. Got it. Uh, and this is in North Atlantic. It's my first ship dead here. Uh, and then I'm going to attack the inconstant, uh, which is going to be plus one um, and minus one uh, for it being a stock attack, but the other warships are there. Um, and so I have plus three, so I need a six. Got it. And no notoriety. Um, and that's the North Atlantic again. Okay. Wish me luck. Uh, that's it for my actions. Here we go. Finale. Mutiny. All right. It's a test 12. Uh, Nemo and Hole. Uh, that's uh, so a three, four. Pass and gain any combination of one D3 ship resources. Fail and lose any combination of one D6. Um, okay. Well, let's let's do it, fam. All right, so we have four. This is our, our finale of the game, plus four. Oh, look at that beautiful end game roll. So that's 10, 14, passed. We're going to gain 1d3 ship resources. That's two ship resources, any of them. Um, well, we definitely want one up on Nemo one up on there and the game ends boom okay now it's counting points uh something i didn't get to do the first time that i played all right this is crazy let's uh go ahead and take a look at our point gainage uh here um so how the game ends we did it defeat victory and scoring you calculate your success in nemo's war in victory points Got it. All right. Uh, passing tests. If you're defeated due to the complete loss of a ship resource, becoming a pariah. All right. Before scoring, place all the adventure cards in your tableau in the pass or fail piles as instructed on each card. And add your equipped Nautilus upgrades to the pass pile. You'll be scoring them. So all of these are in the pass pile. Uh, pass if kept at game's end. So this guy here. Passive unused and passive unused. So both of these. Ooh, I think I won. I think I won. There may have been rule mistakes in here, but I think at least one was to my detriment. Um, and uh, let's see here. Okay, Nemo's motive determines the victory point adjustments to your final score. During setup, you place a Nemo motive. We got that at the beginning of Act 3. You could have changed it. All right, determining your score. You score is determined by counting how many victory points, both positive and negative. Okay, uh, victory points earned from sinking ship tokens, adventure cards, and collected treasure tokens can have their value adjusted per token or card. Okay, when subtracting victory po tokens... Uh, an item's value cannot go below zero and score adjustment of number multiplayer multipliers uh, multipliers for liberation science and wonders score exactly that many victory points for each instance okay um motive score adjustments on of number employers score exactly that many victory points for each such instance got it okay so regular points, sinking ships. A ship token is uh, sunk and do not score ship tokens in the ship draw pool discarded in those taken as salvage. Okay, so these down here, uh, we have, um, if we're looking at our 
ships uh, right here we have uh, non warship sunk is minus one for each this is where we get all of these like crazy point scoring adjusters and stuff <laughs> um, that are going to go into uh, scoring points up here uh, so let's take a look at what we got in this pile um, so we have our sunk ship token okay uh, so the non warships uh, minus one each so this one's only one this one's zero so I only get one point going up to one up there uh, and then for the next one warship sunk uh, is uh, plus zero each so uh, two three four five uh, for those okay and then next thing we're going to do is adventure cards so this tag oh, we have such a fat stack of pass um, these are plus one each so that's two six uh, seven eight nine ten eleven oh, I, I need to yeah 12 13 14 15 16 21 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 so 35 on adventure cards um, so that's going to be 35. This is a crazy way of keeping score. Okay. Uh, 35 for our adventure cards. Oh, uh, and mutiny in and of itself was another 10. Uh, so that's 10, 11. So 46 on that. Okay. Uh, treasure. Uh, is plus zero each, so two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Treasure. I don't think I have any treasure tags up here. These are only special wonders and science up here. Okay. Yeah. Prussia declares war. Um, that's another two. One, two, and one. Okay. Uh, then we have liberation. Uh, liberation, I need some help with. I think that's the, the cubes that I have on the board. Uh, count all uprising cubes on land uh, spaces on the map and calculate their liberation value. Um, so that's times three. So if we look at the board here, we have one two three four five so that's 15 for liberation that's a five and a ten uh, and then science discovered is going to be uh, how many science tags do I have I have one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten science tags. So 60 points for science, a gentleman's 60. Um, and then wonder scene is times four. Uh, so we have wonders that's one, two, three, four, five, six up here. So six wonders, 24 points. So 24. All right. And then we're going to reduce our uh, ship resource penalty. 
Um, so that's uh, for the ship resources up here. We have none. Uh, scouring the seas and characters remaining. Uh, I have... Uh, I think that's for every completed column is scouring the seas. So, uh, scouring the seas. This is shown on the above right tonnage track filled for all oceans uh, for the rightmost column. Yep, so eight points for an inconvenience. See, I was an inconvenience over here. And that gives me eight points for scouring the seas. And... Uh, then we're going to have um, characters remaining five points for our chief engineer. Chief made it. Chief Terrell. Chief there till the end. Working man's hero. All right. So that's five points. One, two, three, four. Okay, so uh, I think the easiest way to do this uh, on our point track uh, is if we just go, all right, my score is 2 uh, plus 4 is going to be 6 uh, plus 10, because I have two tokens here, is going to be 16 um, plus uh, 6, 22. Uh, plus 7 is 29, plus 8 is 30, uh, 37, uh, plus 9 is 46, uh, 56, 76, 116, and 176. We, we good there? Anyone still in there in chat? Uh, 176. Uh, hello from the UK. Well, hello from Juneau, Alaska to you, K uh, Sweeney 36. Uh, 176. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's do this darn thing and see if we can kind of end things. I'm going to flip this around. There's me. Hey, everyone. I hope you can hear me all right. We have our logbook. Let's see what it has to say. Uh, we are in science. Oh, look at these, these ridiculous illustrations. Uh, science. Um, so I need to find out what 176 refer references. I hoped, I hoped that it was going to be on the actual um, reference book here. So 176 turns into um okay uh at the end of the game okay final score uh your level of victory uh here we go 176 defeat defeat come on man come on uh 185 would have been um uh going into failure uh, 220 is inconsequential. I want to make sure that there's no other points that I should have uh, accounted for. But, hey, it's only the second game. I made it to the end, so that's that's how I feel. Uh, I won, um, but uh, by just surviving to the very end there. Uh, let's see what Nemo's motive uh, ended up being. Uh, or his epilogue. So... Uh, defeat is defeat. The Nautilus is lost with all hands whose misfortune is the pursuit of science were the stuff of great tragedy. The world never learns about Captain Nemo and his legacy is lost forever beneath the waves. Sad Nemo. Sad, sad Nemo. Oh no. Oh geez. <laughs> okay. Um... Well, I hope I didn't miss uh, anything on the point counting because I thought I did pretty good and came through at the skin of my teeth. But I think for even making it to the very end there, I am proud. And I am proud of all of you who supported me throughout this thing. Uh, this has been quite the journey. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining in on this live play as I'm playing my second only ever game of this. 
Uh, had a great time. We're going to work on a review coming up here soon. Uh, if you dug some of the things that we did in the live stream, I would love to have some feedback. Um, and uh, if there are things that uh, you want to see different, then also I'd love to do that. Um, just kind of figuring out all these camera setups and everything. Uh, I'm not the most techie guy. Uh, so uh, being able to just like transition to do different cameras and everything uh, feels hugely advanced uh, for what we're doing here, but I'm glad that it's worked out. Uh, I hope things are syncing up all right. Uh, and thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll continue doing this so long as people keep enjoying it. Uh, and I guess that's it. It's time for me to go to bed. Uh, I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald.